Okay, there you are. There I am. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to another edition or episode of Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-Dye. I am your host, Mr. Tie-Dye. So it looks like we got a bunch of people watching already. So I'm just going to kind of do some shout outs here. We got Canel from Brazil, Pammy, uniquely yours, Lois, Annie, Dallas, Barbara, Pam, Larry, Gwen, Dog Lady. Oh, and my mom's in the house. Hi, Mom. Good to see you. Or let you see me. <laughs> um, let's see who else. Rhonda, Simon, Shawnee from East, uh, East Tennessee, William, Cheryl, Lisa, Nathan, David, Susan, Dark Image, Samantha from Netherlands, hello. Oh, and I think I've seen somebody from Australia. It's Thursday morning there. So we're sitting here in, yeah, there we are, Barbara. Hi, Barbara in Australia. Good morning to you. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it looks like we have more people joining in. So... Today I got a few different things planned. First off, I wanted to just kind of give a shout out. I've had uh, some new members sign up since uh, last Wednesday. So we got Tony, Alexandria, or Alexandra, Dre, Jackie, and Peggy. And they also had my first ultimate Mr. Tie Dye fan, Crystal. She signed up. So thank you and hello, Crystal. And I believe I've seen her in the house. I can give a shout out to her if she wants to reveal who she is. I can anyways. And also I want to give a shout out for some of the donations. Uh, I had over at my PayPal was DW and Sherry. And then through uh, another one of my formats here, uh, Venmo, uh, I had Georgette uh, in Crystal River. So we got two crystals. We got a crystal with the ultimate tie-dye fan, and then Georgette lives in Crystal River, Crystal River, Florida. Anyway, she gave me a nice size donation, said she appreciates my kindness for sharing all of this out to everybody so more people can have success. So anyway, so let's dive right in. Um, let's see. First thing, let's go ahead and open up the, the bidding on the reverse dyed art tapestry I made up last week so here this one is the measurements on this is 45 inches wide 39 inches tall and it has raw edges this was just a piece of black fabric so the edges are raw I didn't get it sewn so anyways you guys can deal with sewing that but this here was the reverse it started out black we tied it up removed the color with the decolorant from Dharma or I found it on Amazon also it's a jacquard product and then we put some little fun spirally things here in the corners so anyways this here is officially up for bid now so you guys can bid on that and then the other thing that I wanted to do we I did a tie-dye peace sign tapestry last week and I just wanted to kind of refold this one just so you can really kind of see how it comes together because it seemed like last week there were still some questions on it so that's the first thing i'm going to do let's see oh and uniquely yours yes she's crystal she's the ultimate tie-dye fan so thank you and welcome uh oh my sister's in the house hello sis uh, michelle sykes that's my sister so let's see who else. We got a bunch of people. Amber from Texas. Patrick from oh uh, Tanzania, East Africa. So I got people from all over the world showing up. Nice to see you guys. Uh, Miranda in South Florida. I apologize if I mispronounce names here. The computer is kind of far away. If it's not, then I usually push it off and knock it over. So I have to set it far away from me. Uh, Eat my origami. <laughs> Hi. Uh, let's see. Would you ever do a tutorial about how to tie dye? How to do a tie dye in general, like the preparation of the fabric before dyeing? Uh, I do have. If you go over to my uh, beginner's playlist, there's one on there which is the uh, just for beginner tie dye. It just I do kind of walk through everything there. 
So just look at my beginner playlist and you'll kind of find some different videos there that explain some of the details of getting started. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So I'll get that out of the way. So what I did last time is I started out with a, a tapestry that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out and then I folded it in half and then I folded it in quarters. This here is the center of my tapestry. So I marked a little spot there and then I opened this up and I drew a 60 degree line up here, right from there, right from the center. And then I folded this bottom edge up to that 60 degree line. And what that did was form the, the bottom leg or uh, one of the side legs of my peace sign here. And then I took this top side and I folded it down right on top there. So you guys can kind of see how things are lining up. I'm not getting exact, but I just wanted to kind of quickly show you. And then the next thing I did, so once again, this here is the center. Then I folded this top part down and laid it right there. And then this is where I drew my circle at. So I put my finger on the point here and I stretched my string out and I drew my circle which would have been right in the middle between these lines here so and just in case anybody's not watching that wasn't here last week I, this is the tapestry I tied up last week and so I'm just kind of re-showing now that it's got its dies on here how it was folded so you can really kind of get it into your mind so I drew my my partial circle on and then this here's where I folded right up the center here and you have to be careful to catch this fold in here. Like I say, go back and watch the last week's video if you haven't folded a peace sign or whatever. But once I got that folded all the way up, then I tied this off right here in the middle. And then I folded this right up right next to it here. So now you guys can kind of see just how this peace sign came together now that I have the color on it. You can see, then I tied off a line right here and I dyed that black. And I tied off this line and dyed that black. So that was the peace sign from last week. And this here will be the second tapestry up for bid. Right now the, the heart tapestry is what we have up for bid. And let me just take a scroll back and see. I didn't notice any bids come in yet. Okay. Oh, and we got Simon from France. I just noticed that. So, hello, Simon. Bonjour. Um, oh, Magic Dragon is in. I don't see any bids yet on the heart. We'll leave that run until I get done folding the first tapestry. Um, let's see. Great to be with you, Mar uh, Marissa. Larry, oh, hello, Larry. Nice to see you. I got one more tea to tie for you. I have your other, the rest of your order done. You may have seen pictures over on my site. Uh, watch the commercials even, visit away. Oh, awesome, Alan, thank you. Anytime people let the ads roll or click on one of the advertisers, I get a little piece of that advertising money. So that's a way to support me and it doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of time. So thank you, Alan. Uh, let's see, Crystal, uh, love your work, thank you. Hello, Scott in blank, blank, Michigan. I've been searching for a video on how to do pants and how to fold them. Wasn't able to find, okay, yeah, I haven't done pants yet, but I do have that on my list, so I will try to get to that soon, Amber. Uh, making a star flower while watching, awesome. Yeah, that's nice to sit and just do tie-dye together, even if we, we have to be in different states and countries even. Let's see, do you have a video on re to refresh black clothing, not jeans? Uh, I know it's not much tie-dye but planning to do that using Bucket and ProShine. Yeah, I don't have that, but I have done some of that dyeing where I just kind of mix up a big batch of uh, the dye and soda ash and stuff all in together, and then you just submerge your item. The main thing is you want to kind of stir it around in there. Uh, I usually, you know, stir it like every five or ten minutes at the beginning, and I like to kind of stir it at least for the first 45 minutes uh, just to get it 
otherwise you might have some parts that are a little bit more uh, dyed than others so you get a little bit of patchiness the stirring helps reduce that but usually you still get a little bit of that if depending on the size of your bucket and I don't have the the numbers for how much dye but I'm sure over on uh, the Dharma site you should be able to find something that's also called vat dyeing uh, another name that uses less water is low water immersion dye, and so one of those two methods you should be able to dye something solid. So I hope that answered your question, and we kicked off the bid, $35 from Gwen, thank you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, is every, is, how many people are having trouble hearing me right now? I'm still trying, I'm trying to sit closer to my mic here I, I swapped my camera around but I still haven't been able to figure out a way to turn up the actual volume I guess I could just try to remember to talk louder so a peace sign would be cool with darts coming off the center circle uh, like the sun tap you made oh yes you could definitely do that uh, you just set that on an incline and dye your stuff and you could dye the rest of it in liquid dye if you wanted to, but then that outer circle, you could put powder on that and then let the dyes run out. So, yeah, combo between liquid and ice, or you could even go for the whole ice if you want. But, yeah, that would be cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got a bid from Michelle for 45 for the heart. Uh, oh, we got a bid for 50 Let's see, is he on? I'm not getting anything. Uh, yes, Eddie, uh, I, I had to reset mine. Mine didn't kick in right away, so I just refreshed uh, the YouTube page, and then my video showed up there. If you just want to do all black garment, you're better off using RIT, I think. Um, yes, you can. Uh, I just know that I've had better... I mean, the writ is going to be less expensive, but if you want a really nice dark black, I still recommend going with the Procyon, but that's that's a choice. I know writ is specifically made for doing the vat dyeing, so uh, that's a possibility. I guess you could maybe use two packs of the writ if you want to make sure you got good dark. And I'm not sure all the instructions on that, but I would follow the instructions and maybe even extend time periods just to make sure you get it. Uh, so you put soda ash in with the dye. Yes, that was how I did it. Uh, I'm sure there's other ways, but I mixed up uh, dye and then I actually had mixed up soda ash and I poured them into the same bucket and just kind of stirred that up. Like I say, I don't have the, the numbers, but over on the Dharma site on that dyeing, they should have some numbers that will get you kind of started in the direction of figuring out how much of each one you need. Picking up the right dye now at Walmart. Uh, yeah, if they have the Procyon dye, awesome. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it sounds like everybody can hear me fine. Uh, just a few people having trouble. So, yeah, I will just try to talk louder and see if that helps. And I'm still trying to figure out, I have to have my phone plugged in, but I, I don't have an actual mic jack because I have an iPlus 7 or an iPhone 7 Plus, and they did away with the microphone jack, or the headphone jack. So you have to use the power cord, but whenever I have my phone plugged in, I can't plug in the the headphone anyways. I'm going to try and get that sorted out just to see if we can avoid these issues, but I did try to move the mic closer here, and I'll talk louder. Let's see. Uh, we have a bid for 60. Oh, we, we're not doing the peace sign just yet. I'm still uh, doing the the reverse dyed heart. So the peace sign will come up after that. I'm going to get started on this uh, tie dye here. And I'll try to keep up with this here. But so far we have, I think, a $50 bid for the heart at this point. And I'm going to scroll the rest of the way down and see if there's any others. Do I really need soda ash? I have a kit. It doesn't say anything about. Okay, if you if you have a kit, then uh, yeah, it probably means that there's soda ash or there's some sort of a fixer 
in the die itself. So what I recommend when you're doing the kit is to get all of your stuff tied up first and then mix your dyes because I think the dyes become active as soon as you add water to them. So and one of the ways to help folding, if you're not going to be soaking in soda ash ahead of time, that's my tapestries are barely damp with soda ash, but what you can do is do a pre-wash on yours just to make sure that you don't have any stuff that's going to interfere with the dyes. And then just after you spin it out, just keep it wet and then you can fold it up just plain wet. And once everything's all tied up, then mix your dyes and then go ahead and use them up uh, right away. Uh, but the kits should have just some simple instructions for you. Usually the one step, the, the fixer, is in the dye itself. I've got the incense burning watching you. Awesome. Bluetooth mic. Yeah, I, I thought about that. I haven't uh, looked into it just yet, but I'm going to research some options for how to get a better mic for my phone here. So, coming in, hearing you well. Okay. So, the first design I was going to do is a pride flag, since this here is pride month. So, I'm going to kind of explain how I, I folded this up, and I already drew my lines on, because it's too big to kind of show you all of that at one time. So, I have my, my lines on here. So, what I did was I folded the tapestry in half to start with. And then I folded it in quarters. So here's the center of my tapestry. And then this here is the rest of the center here. So once I had it folded like that, then I drew my line on to mark off the center of this. And then, so basically for the pride flag, you need six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. So for that, I had to draw five marker lines that I'm actually going to fold on here. So the first one I folded in half and that got me my center line and then I just measured this distance divided that in three so this was 27 inches so I drew a line at 9 and a line at 18 and then I did the same thing for this side. This here is 27 inches so this is at 9 and this is 18. So that got me all my lines here. I'm going to go ahead and fold it. Uh, I leave it folded in half there's no sense in trying to fold this whole pleated thing all the way across the whole tapestry. So folding it in half is going to be easier. And you can do the same thing with a t-shirt. I would tuck one sleeve into the other, fold it in half, and then you can do your measurements the same way. Just fold it in half, get your center line, and then measure that in half and draw three line, or two lines in there. So I hope that's making sense. What is the name of your video that demonstrates mixing the dyes? I can't seem... Um, that's in my beginner's playlist also. And I can't remember. I think it's just called uh, How to Mix uh, Tie-Dye or How to Mix Your Dyes. Something like that. But if you go to my beginner's playlist, then it's in one of the top three videos there in the beginner playlist for mixing the Procyon dyes. The happy Pride Month. Thank you. Yes, a happy Pride Month to everybody. That's why I decided I want to get this made up. So if anybody else wanted to make Pride flags or like I say, Pride t-shirts, uh, this here is just the way to do it. So what I'm going to do is just accordion fold. Let me make sure I don't lose my line here. So I'm just going to go along here and accordion fold each one of these lines, tie it up and then I'm going to scrunch this part and tie that up and then I'll move on to the next section here. So, oh, hello Eric and hello, he says hello to all the Rainbow Warriors. So yes, we got lots of Rainbow Warriors in the house today. It says we have 61 people watching. So, and currently for anybody that came in new here, we're doing the auction for the reverse dyed heart that I dyed up last week. And let me post a link. So here is the the link to my my launch links. The the I think it's the second link on there. That will take you over to my Facebook page where I have the the pictures 
of the the heart tapestry and the peace sign those are the two tapestries that will be up for bid so you can see the the whole picture there and let's see okay looks like we're doing good here so I'm just going to keep folding these here and try to keep up with what's going on I think the the high bid for the heart tapestry is still sitting at 50 so we're going to leave that open until I get this tapestry here finished. Once this is finished, then I'm going to close out the heart tapestry and I'll start the bidding on the peace sign. So I'm doing uh, folds here. Let me just do a quick measure just so I can give an accurate here. Uh, these are just over a half inch in pleats because I'm doing a, a, a shorter run here. If I was gonna pleat across the whole tapestry, then I would probably do a, a little bit taller of a pleat. But that's that's one reason why I'm folding it in half to make my folding less, and then I have less chances of, when you tie it off, it buckling up on you. So, and that only puts, you know, this here at two layers. So that's, that's a, a good, amount of fabric there for doing your tie dyeing and making sure you get nice even stripes. Of course this will be a tie dye uh, pride flag so there will be a little bit of texture in there with the colors. <clears throat> but it's not the official dimensions. This here is still one of the 54 by 56 tapestries. So what do we have going on out there in the world? How's everybody's uh, spring going? We're just about done with spring now. We're coming up on the equinox here soon and we'll get into summer. Here in Oregon, we've had a lot of rainy days here lately, but today is actually a sunny day with nice blue sky and some puffy clouds out there. And I had a long sleeve shirt on earlier, but I had to go put on a, a t-shirt because it was just too warm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just scrunch these up. You can come back and do this later, but sometimes it's easier just to go ahead and get these scrunched up right now. So I'm just going to do a scrunch on all of my stripes here for the flag. And then I can just tie them off as I go here because I'll have my string still attached. here in Seattle. Uh, let's see. Loving the 80 degrees weather here in Greenville, South Carolina. 93 degrees someplace else and it's 5 p.m. so I'm guessing that's probably East Coast. So, all right so there's our first stripe. Now we're just gonna move right down the row here to the next one. Hot, sunny, and very windy here out of Nashville. Hey, Saucy Mare, nice to see you. Made it better late than never. Yes, I'm doing a pride flag today. So I folded the, the flag in half, and then I measured out, and I drew my lines on um, to space this out to give me six lines. So I'm just pleating all of these. and then scrunching up the actual lines here. So, had a heat index of 106 in Mississippi. Oh wow, that's hot. And I bet you guys had high, hum high humidity too with that. That makes the heat even harder to stand when you got humidity too. So, 89 in Ohio, 93 in Miami. Wells is wet and miserable as per. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. We'll try to send you some sunshine there, Saucy Mare. There's a little bit of sunshine sprinkled around the country here. Some states would probably gladly ship some of your their sunshine your way. Oh. 
Okay, so we got the next stripe. So I'm just gonna, I left my string attached so that I could just run this up. And I'm just gonna wrap this a couple times. I don't need to tie it. The wrapping it is gonna be enough to hold that in place. Wrap that three times, and then I'm gonna go ahead and scrunch this part up. And I just usually try to break up some of these pleats a little bit by just stuffing a little bit of extra fabric in there. The main thing is that you're moving this around, just try not to pull out of your pull the lines out, or your flag is gonna be a little bit wavy, which isn't a bad thing. But if you want straighter lines, then just be careful that you don't pull those out. chilly until today here in Utah. Now it feels just right. Oh, that's perfect. That's what I love to. Here in Oregon, if we can get temperatures up into the mid 80s during the day and cool off down into the 70s or high 60s at night, that's that's just perfect for me. If I can wear a tank top and shorts, I think I have perfect weather. But yeah, we have had uh, rain and cooler weather the last few days here in Oregon, so we've just been inside mostly. Let's see what else we got on. Uh, six when are you folding? When you are folding that, how would it look different in st stitching? Uh, the stitching is going to give you shorter pleats just because unless you can find a machine that has a really long stitch on there but it'd be basically the same thing i'm folding it because it's quicker that way um, you could hand stitch it if you wanted to or this one here you could probably even stitch it on a machine fairly easily you just need to have a i guess i said that ahead of time my brain thought it faster than my mouth could speak it but on a machine you would want to have a nice long uh, basting stitch Otherwise, your pleats are going to be really short when you pull it up, and then it might want to buckle on you some. But I think it would come out just about the same. I mean, there would be just little differences, but however works best for you. For me, just doing the, the long pleat is easy, so that's... Whenever I can pleat it, fold something up, I prefer that to the stitching, but sometimes the stitching just really brings the design together, kind of like a rug. Yep, I said that. Okay, what else we got? 91 outside of San Francisco. 82 here in P-Town. Oh, Pendleton. Uh, let's see. Nice enough in Portland to tie-dye shirts outside. That's always nice. I do that every now and then when it's too warm inside. Pack everything up and go sit outside. Tie dye. In fact, I'll probably do another quick video on that peace sign, uh, just so I can put up, just post, just a, a little quick tutorial on the peace sign. But I'll have to do that outside where I have more room. So let's see what else we got going on. Oh, Elise, we got another person from France. Bonjour. Uh, what's in your pouch today? Oh, the same crystals. I, I usually, I'll swap them out sometimes. I think I have a, a clear one, clear, mostly clear with some blue in it. Plus my other little rocks, yeah. So there's my crystal with the little stripe. It kind of reminds me of tie-dye a little bit. So that's, that's the big one. Then I got my, the same assortment of little ones in there. Some hematite and... I think a uh, jade and oh and I got that other stone from Michigan Petrovsky stone or something it's it's uh, actually a, a fossil I don't know if you guys can see the little shapes in there anyways that was sent to me by one of the rainbow warriors something that he had picked up and polished it for me and sent it so yep that's my my pouch to keep my crystals right here next to my heart 
I believe crystals have healing energy, so I like to have them all around. In fact, I got crystals sitting here on my computer, so I always have crystals around. So, <laughs> yep, the dude abides. I throw them out now and then. Thank you for catching it. A lot of times my, my little jokes will go by unnoticed. But every now and then people catch my jokes in my videos and they make comments. So yes, that was a big Lebowski mention. So let's see. Just oh you just like the live. Thank you. Uh, yeah, appreciate people giving this these videos a thumbs up. Uh, it just helps make my channel more searchable or findable on YouTube the more likes I get and the more subscribers uh, I was checking out my video count my subscribers and stuff and it looked like I have uh, more people that watch my videos that aren't subscribed than are subscribed so anybody that uh, isn't subscribed unless you have a specific reason not to I ask that you go ahead and click that subscribe button uh, you can either click the little uh, picture of me from that looks like it's from The Simpsons, but it's not. It's that other show, cartoon, I can't think of it, with Bender. Uh, Futurama, yes, that's it. You can click on there, subscribe, or I think below the video, you can click to subscribe someplace. But the subscriptions, that helps my channel also. I did recently just hit another mile mark there for the... Subscribers, I have uh, 40,000 subscribers now on my channel. That's not too bad, considering I just started doing these videos. I've been on YouTube for since 2008, but I started doing these videos two and a half years ago. So, 40,000 is a nice amount to, to gain in two and a half years. So, I want to thank you guys. I do appreciate everybody who subscribed and everybody who watches. And I appreciate people who let the ads roll because I get a little piece of that ad money. So that is a nice way to support this channel. It doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of time just letting the ads roll. Okay, enough commercials. We'll get back to seeing what's going on here. Griselda, hello, welcome. Petoskey, yes, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, somebody sent me a stone from there, so I guess that's the only place in the world you can find them. So that was pretty cool. I, I Like I say, I collect stones, so to have somebody send me a, a unique one was really wonderful. And like I say, I carry that in my pouch all the time now. Most excellent. I'm a huge fan of the dude. Awesome. It's hot, and as you know, hot and humid in Rocky Point, North Carolina. I think it's like 110 humidity, like walking into a spa. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Whew, yes. I, I visited uh, Florida several years ago, and I don't know if it was the same experience, but I, I definitely had an experience that seemed to be similar to that. We walked out of the airport, and it was like, woo! Somebody turn down the heat, please. We had fun, though. We were from Oregon, and we went to Disney World. And while we were at Disney World, they had a rainstorm blow through. And almost everybody either put on little raincoats or they went inside. And us weirdos from Oregon, <laughs> we were dancing and singing and stomping in the puddles. <laughs> of course, that only lasted for 15 minutes. And then when the thunder and lightning started, then we ran inside and froze our butts off because the air conditioner was on in there. <laughs> so that was quite a trip. Anyways, enough about that. You are so awesome. Thank you much for sharing your tech teaching and beautiful art. Oh, thank you, Brandy, and you're welcome. I love to see other people have success. So sharing my 20 years of knowledge seemed to be the perfect way to be of service when I felt called to be of service. So, yes, I come on and do these videos. Oh, that was another mile marker I had just uh, a few days ago. Was I uploaded my 250th video on YouTube. So that was cool to have that come in. And then also on that same day, I went over 3 million views. 
So cool. that was cool too. So my channel is really, really growing, and it's thanks to you, Rainbow Warriors, out there. If you guys weren't interested in learning tie dye, then my channel would have gone no place. But since you are, I am here, and I'm just going to keep going with these. As long as there's interest in learning, I'm going to keep doing them. Unless I get called on to another mission. But as I see it right now, I'm going to be doing tie dye for a long time. So, okay, so we're getting this folded up. We got one more, and then we're going to start putting some dye on this thing. So, let's see. I'm subscribed. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Let's see. Congratulations on your milestones. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, Marissa. What brand of dye do you use? Procyon. I use fiber reactive Procyon dye. I buy it mostly from Dharma, but I have also purchased it from Grateful Dyes in Colorado, and I've also bought from Custom Colors in North Carolina. And one other dye house that I've heard about is Procam. And so I haven't purchased from them, but that's just another one. I know that some of the dye houses are getting backed up on orders. Uh, and they've also had just a little bit of a dye shortage going on. Some of that was happened before the shutdown uh, with the turquoise dyes, which then go into the blues and the greens and the purples. Um, but I think there's just been a shortage just because shipping has been slow. So I'm sure even the dye companies, they get their shipments that are delayed. So they, they can't mix up their dyes. Anyway, so if you can't find it in one place, maybe check one of the other dye houses out. And see what they got. And just be patient. I know a lot of the dye houses are working on skeleton crews. And I've heard that Dave, he's working by himself. And he's also dealing with some health issues. That's in custom colors in North Carolina. So just try to be patient with the workers out there. Whether it's tie-dye or the restaurant or the gas station or wherever you guys are going. If you can show just a little bit of patience and gratitude for the people who are out there still working. That just a little love goes a long way. It makes the world a brighter place. At least that's what Mr. Tie-dye says. Let's see. I really think you are the best channel on YouTube. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you, Sarah. That means a lot to me. I have a lot of fun with what I do, and this is just a, an awesome crowd that comes in here. Let's see. I think I missed a few here. I uh, love the shirt you have on. Thank you. This one here is the Quantum Scrunch. And just on the off chance that somebody needed a link, I had it called up and ready here, so I'm pasting a link to the Quantum Scrunch video in the thing. That's the t-shirt that I'm wearing today. And there's so many different ways to dye this to get it to come out different ways, but I have a lot of fun with it, so. And I also did a Quantum V, Spider V, or Quantum Spider V T. Anyway, so I did Quantum on the outside, and then the, in the V side I did a, a spider design. So you can find that on my channel too. Okay. Became a member. Oh, thank you, Erica, for becoming a member of my channel. Uh, I appreciate all the members out there. It really helps, you know, the support that comes in for this here. It just allows me to keep on making these videos. Um, I haven't been doing as many custom orders lately because I've been busier with the, the channel. So, since I'm not having the income from the custom orders, it's nice to have the income coming in through people supporting this channel. So, thank you. Okay, let's see what else we have going on in the box here. Did tie-dye today uh, on top of a reverse tie-dye earlier. I forgot to make free soak and soda ash. Uh, you can still, if you haven't washed it out yet, you can still add the soda ash to it. Um, I've, I've uh, soaked something in just plain water, tied it up, dyed it, and then I squirted soda ash on. I keep a little bottle of it just in a regular dye bottle. So you would just want to coat the whole thing on the top, flip it over, coat the whole thing on the bottom. And you can even put on a couple rags and try to soak up some of the excess, or you can just let it drip out. Uh, if you, I put mine on a rack so that it just drips out. If you're going to bag it, then I would go ahead and soak some of that excess up. 
but it's never too late to add the soda ash. And then once you add the soda ash, that's when your actual batching time starts. So, as long as you have soda ash in there sometime before you batch it, you're good to go. So that just might mean that if you've already left it sit for 24 hours, you might have to leave it sit for another 24 hours. I tried my first peace sign a few days ago and it turned out good. Awesome, Allison, that's wonderful to hear. Going to have to redo the whole thing. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, let's see, love your channel, merci beaucoup. Oh, you're welcome. I don't know how to say you're welcome in French, but you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's see, in, in Oregon, we wear shorts and it is 50 degrees. Puddles. <laughs> yes, that's, that's just how we do it. The, the one joke that I've heard, uh, how do you tell uh, a tourist in Oregon in the wintertime? They have an umbrella. <laughs> uh, I have all my crystals around me. Awesome. Yes, crystals are wonderful. Shorts, yes, we got that. Dharma ships really fast. Yeah, sometimes they've been, been slow just because of this. Um, I had placed an order... It's been a while back now, but it was during the shutdown, and normally I get it in about three days, and this time I think it took me a week and a half. So it's just mostly, I think, because they're working a skeleton crew inside. So let's see. 250. I'm not sure what that's in reference to. Maybe I said something. But I see somebody said uh, 250. Wow, Simon Falls 250. Okay, yeah, I don't know what that's in reference to. I haven't got down to the bottom yet. I'm a little behind in the chat box, and I haven't seen any other bids come in. As far as I know, we still have uh, 50 dollars as the top bid from yes, Maxine bid 50 dollars for the uh, heart tapestry. I don't see any other bids on that. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, that was for the peace sign. We're not doing the peace sign yet. Okay, I'm gonna try and catch up here. I apologize if I've missed some of these comments here, but I'm getting a little bit behind on the chat box. How do you determine how much and how tightly to tie the fabric and where to place the string? Um, I usually will uh, place the string, you know, on places where I've drawn the line. I like to have it fairly tight, but not so tight that I can't open the, the creases up because I like to be able to look down in there for uh, white spots after I've dyed it. And then when I'm tying up one of these sections here, I just like to, I'll go ahead and just explain a little bit here. So I'm just going to scrunch this up. And then my main goal is just to condense it some. But like I say, I like to have it loose enough where I can still open it up. So I don't like to condense it too tightly uh, unless I'm intentionally doing that. And then I'll use sinew if I'm tightening it up. But that's because then I want white lines. So for here, with my string, I'll just kind of pass it under. And just I'm just kind of gathering slack up. So I just kind of pass it back and forth underneath there and just see how much it's gathered and I try to make sure that my creases are staying nice and flat I don't want to, to buckle this up and fold this over because that's going to leave a nice pocket in there that might be white so my main goal is just to try to tighten it up because then it does resist some of the dye you know on this one here I'm going to be dyeing these a solid color but if I was going to put like a light blue and then a dark blue over top, this extra patterning in here from the scrunching is going to give me a little bit of patterning. So, but I still want the dye to be able to go down inside. So you just have to kind of play with the kite string and figure out what works best for you. But like I say, I'm not tying these super tight. I am just going just tight enough to hold everything in place, but still allow me to open things back up again. So I hope that answers your question. I do have a video uh, called Kite String or Sinew, where I walk through and I show you uh, how I use the kite string and how I use the sinew. 
Uh, so that one might have a little bit more detail in it. So you can just search my channel. And it's called Kite String or Sinew. I have to head out. Uh, oh, see you, Sarah. Nice to have you stop in. Oh, from Washington. Yep, you're up here in the Pacific Northwest. So, yeah, we're coming up on an hour already here. So <laughs> these videos always run long because I get chatty, I think. I'll check out the Quantum Scrunch. Orange and green make brown. Yes. Uh, and I would start, if you're going to intentionally make brown, start out with mostly orange and add just a few drops of green at a time and you'll see the color, the tone of the brown change with the more drops. But yes, definitely start with orange first. I just did a quantum scrunch the other day, it looks really cool. Do any of your projects turn out? that you just totally don't like or not the way that you thought they would. Uh, yes, I have that happen now and then. Uh, the trick to that is to just get used to tie-dye being sometimes its own little thing. Uh, if I have just like a random spot, you know, I call it, you know, a little thing from the universe helping me out with my tie-dye. But every now and then I tie something up and I dye it and it just, it doesn't come out the way that I wanted it to. Now that doesn't make it a bad tie-dye, it just means that I didn't accomplish my goal. So I, at that point, would tweak my process a little bit and try it again. But that tea, I will still take a picture of it and put it out there because somebody might buy it. But if you really don't want to do that, the other way that you can try to save that tea that didn't turn out is to tie it up again. Uh, and I usually will do like a Ron Star. So I'll soak it in soda ash, and I usually will put a little bit of soda ash into a, a little dish pail rather than drop it right into my whole five gallon bucket because the dye sometimes will still leach out just a little bit and you don't want your whole bucket of soda ash spoiled with the, the dye. So I will re-soak it in a separate pan and then I spin it out the excess, tie it up while it's still damp with the Ron Star design, so I'm using the sinew and tying it really tight. And you got to make sure you wrap the sinew. I usually wrap it three times, pull it tight, wrap it three times, pull it tight, and do that one more time. So I got like nine wraps around with the sinew. And then I dye the whole thing black. And then when you open it up, all the places that had color on the tea are going to shine through on the black tea. So that one I call an over dye. And you can find that on my channel too. So that's, that's the way that I deal with ones that don't turn out. You can either, sometimes if it just didn't have enough color in it, I have a big white spot, I'll tie it up the same way and add a little bit more of the same colors. But otherwise, I tie it up and dye the, the whole thing black. So, and I do, I've worn a few of those t-shirts where you've seen just the black tee with the color shining through. How do you place a bid for the auction? Uh, you just put it in the the chat box right here where you place your comment. So right now the high bid for the heart tapestry is sitting at fifty dollars, and you can see the heart tapestry over on my Facebook page, and I'll put a link. So down here in the chat box. There's the launch links. The, the top one there is, oh, and I guess the top one's for this video. The second one in that list is for the, the tapestries that are up for auction where you can see the whole thing. But this one here measures, I think I said it was 45 by 39 inches. And right now the top bid is at $50. I'm going to close that out probably as soon as I finish dyeing this tapestry here. Then I'll close the bidding on the heart. Oh, yeah. Do you prefer flat or round sinew string? I like the flat. I tried the, the round once, and I, I just didn't like the way when I, I wrap around and pull it tight. I like the way that the, the flat cinches in. It locks in on itself. So I prefer the flat sinew. Let's see. Got to run. You'll have... Peace-filled and loving day. Come visit fabulous Las Vegas. We, 
Vegas. We are open. Awesome. Kevin, nice to see you. And you have a great day, too. Peace, love, light, and laughter to you. Down in Las Vegas. Does that mean you're working at the, the store down there? The love... Is that... Uh, Love in Vegas or something? I don't know. The Love on Hate in San Francisco, you associate with that store? That's the only one that I know of in Vegas. Unless it's your own store. If it is, awesome. Congrats on that, too. Uh, how do you tie up a shirt when you dye it all over black? How do you tie up the shirt when you dye it? Oh, I usually tie it up with the Ron Star design. If you search my channel, there's uh, several videos I've done in the Ron Star, different variations of the Ron Star. So you can find that over on my channel also. Um, but that's a, you can tie up any of them. You know, any different design that you do with the sinew is going to give you that same effect. The Ron Star is usually just the one that I go to first. The Miranda Bid 60 and Maxine Bid 65. Uh, Saucy Mayor, I love that you're such a great cheerleader for Carl. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, and thank you, Saucy Mayor. Uh, did the extra sinew, did the sinew ever stain your shirt that was left white? Uh, I did a flag and the red and white sinew, light orange stain. Uh, yes, I've had uh, that happen just a few times, and I wasn't sure if it was the actual sinew that did it or if maybe I had gotten some dye on there but that's another reason why I work on the inside of my t-shirts uh, sometimes you know the washable marker even though they they always wash out every now and then I've had it had one little mark that didn't come out and I don't know why but if you work on the inside of your shirt any of those little stains typically are going to be on the inside of your shirt so that's my suggestion for that. I don't I don't know why that happens, but I just try to figure out a way to avoid it. Okay, it looks like we're caught up with that. So we right now we have the high bid at 65. So I'm gonna go ahead and well, I guess I was gonna try to pull that, but I'll just cut it. Okay, so now let me see here. I think this was the top. I should have some labels down here to show me that this is the bottom. I lost track of my top and bottom, but I believe that's the way it was there. This here is my bottom. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put on some gloves, and then I'm going to splash some dye on this thing. And then as soon as I'm done splash and dye, then I'll close out the bidding for the heart, and then we're going to move into uh, the next tapestry. I had another inspired dream, but I'm going to, rather than try to talk about that one right now, I'll wait and explain that one once I start folding it. The other thing I like to do with my scrunches is just kind of use my cuticle pusher to go in there and just kind of even some of the, the pleats out in here. Not not the pleats, the scrunches, the little folds. And I like to make sure that none of the folds are kind of flopped over onto another one. Because then that just kind of impedes the dye a little bit. So, but anything that has a nice smooth edge can be used in this method here. Okay, so I think that is ready. So... We're going to put our colors on, and with the pride flag, the, the red is at the top of the rainbow here, so we're going to put that color up top, and then we're just going to go all the way down. Like I say, I'm going to dye this and let it sit just a little bit. I've had a bunch of questions uh, from people about having their, their dyes spread together too much. So part of that is how you apply the dye. Um, so what I usually do if I have a line that I, I want to keep for my colors is I dye starting back from that line. And I think today I'm going to go back about two inches from this line and let it kind of spread a little bit on its own before I 
touch in, touch up the rest of it there. So, let's see. If you do a front one design, can you do a spiral on the back of the shirt? Um, the spiral, it's going to be more difficult. I have had somebody that they wanted a spiral on the back and I can't remember what the front was. It might have been a scrunch. But it's a matter of having something in between inside the t-shirt where you can kind of tie and spiral both of them up and but keeping them separate. So it, it can be done. It's just a little bit tricky. The better design to do on the back though that's a little bit easier if you tie one thing on the the front and then you could tie the spider on the back because the back is naturally already going to be folded in half. Uh, the other thing you can do is twist a little bit in from that back edge and that'll put two spirals on the back. So yes, you can get a spiral on there, but it's a little bit too complicated for me to try to explain how to do that here on this video right now. Uh, lost track of my bottom ears. <laughs> You're so funny, Saucy Bear. Uh, you once mentioned getting your soda ash from a pool supplier. I looked in the pool section of our local do-it-yourself store and found enough to last me six months at one-fifth the price I was paying. Thanks. You're welcome, Simon. Yes, I I was able to find it uh, 50 pounds for $30 in our pool supply store. And yeah, that's a much better price than paying the other prices and then paying shipping also. Uh, yeah, the bid is still sitting at 65 last I saw. I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love how organized you are. <laughs> yes, well, I have to, I spend a lot of time organizing everything so that I'm ready to go. And... I've still had days where I start my live video and then find out, nope, I don't have my yardstick, but today I do. I have my yardstick right here. But yes, I do spend the whole morning really kind of setting up the scene here so that I'm ready to go and I have everything. So i got to kind of walk through the whole process of what I'm going to do in advance so that I'm ready for you guys. So anyways, yes, thank you. I do, I do prepare. I got my swimming pool store also. Oh, great. Yes, the soda ash in the swimming pool stores is great. So we're going to go ahead and get started now. So I'm going to start with red up here at the top. And like I say, if you start, well, I guess that's not in the screen. So we're going to move these over. Okay, now I'm in the screen. Oh, and did you guys see my little addition over here? Yep. See my peace and love? Yep. I just added that in there. This here, they're actually painted gold, but then they have some sort of an iridescent thing on there. So they sparkle with rainbow. So I really like them. Uh, so anyways, that was a s squirrel moment there. Let's see. I can't stand when I have to remix dye halfway through. My judgment is lacking sometimes. I don't have huge squirt bottles. Need to fix that. Yeah, I I have these big 32 ounce bottles so that I can mix up enough to fill these up twice here. So that definitely comes in handy. And I just bought these bottles here at Dharma and they had either you could get them with the cap or with the spout or with the cap. But the cap seemed to work good for me. But yes, just a larger container helps. But you also have to make sure that you're going through that die. Uh, so I, I usually, like you can see on here, I write a date on my bottles of when the die is mixed. So I know when it starts to get old, I'll add another scoop of die in there to refresh it. But I tend to go through a lot of die, so I, I like the big bottles. I'm partially sighted. I miss the peace and love thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, uh, I, sometimes I block it. So when I sit back like this here, then you can see it sitting there. It was just a little subtle detail. Anyways. 
Uh, notice the sign at the beginning. Very fitting. Thank you. Love the colors in your peace sign. Love DS. I love the, the iridescent look. And every time I move, the, the colors for me shift. So. Oh, you're using 8-ounce bottles. Yeah, that, that takes a lot of di uh, mixing of dye in those. Stay always one step ahead. Organized. Yep. You got to think about these things. I use about one cup per shirt. Mix up. Four six ounce at a time. Do you use Rhea at all? I dye my own fabric and I'm new to your channel, but I don't hear you say anything about urea. How do you how do you do low water immersion dyeing? Okay, the re urea is uh, a wetting agent, and it also allows you to mix more powder into your water. So I don't use it all the time. Uh, there was a time when I was doing a lot more tie dye, and I mixed up my dye water in a, a six gallon jug at a time. So for that one there, I did mix urea in all the time. But if that sits for too long, then it starts, the urea will start to take on a smell and then that's when I usually pour it out. Well, I was going through my six gallons uh, within, I think, two months. So I wasn't having that issue. But I'm not sure at what point it started going bad, but once it starts going bad, then I didn't trust mixing dye with it anymore. So I stopped making dye water, and now I just mix my powders straight with my water. But some of the dyes, like my red and my black ones that I use extra powder in, those ones I will still go ahead and throw a, a tablespoon if I'm mixing 16 ounces. If I'm mixing 32 ounces, I put two tablespoons of urea in and then I put my dye powder in and then I blend that up. Oh and the other thing I put in the gasoline oil so I keep that in a little dropper here and gasoline oil is a it breaks the surface tension so it helps the the dyes soak into the fabric so I usually will put like 15 drops into a 32 ounce bottle so anyways let's get back to our dyeing here So I'm just dying back away from the line just so that the dyes can have a chance to spread some on their own. And like I say, these here in the rainbow colors, it's not as pertinent because if these colors mix together a little bit, it's not bad. But I just had a few people saying that they've had their colors mixing together. And this is one way to avoid that is just to leave a little bit of white space let the dye spread some, and then I come back and I slowly add more dye to that. So we're just doing double duty here, just trying to explain how people can avoid their dyes mixing quite so much. Okay, what else do we got going on here? Do you know how to do the ripple shirts? I would like to send the link to it. Oh yes, somebody answered that. Yeah, the, the ripple is one that Josh Shep, he made uh, that design up. I learned it from him. So out of respect for Josh, I'm not doing a video because my videos are go out there for free. He does sell it over on his Etsy page. That's uh, Push Rainbows on Etsy. So you can buy the Ripple design over there. That's just a way that you can help support other artists. Um, I support other artists in what they're doing. Um, I also put out my free videos. The reason I do the free videos, though, is my own thing. Uh, I felt called to be of service, and the sharing of my knowledge seemed like the most fun way that I could be of service. And seeing the, the world view that I'm, you know, people come in from all over the world. I, I feel like I'm being of service to the whole world. So that's just my own choice, but not everybody is giving all of their stuff away for free. That would be like uh, if you work at your job and do a certain amount of work for so much money, and then somebody said, well, can you do that work? Uh, come over to my house and do that work, but I want you to do it for free. You know, so anyway. I support Josh and I, I purchased the tutorial so that I could learn to do it. And then I'm going to move on from that conversation. I think I've spent enough time there. 
Oh, I think I got sidetracked. I was answering a question here. Sorry about that. I get sidetracked and I... Okay, I was talking about urea. Okay, so urea is a wetting agent. So I, I use it in some of my dyes, but I don't use it in my dyes all the time. It's not something that's required uh, for the dyes. The, the Procyon dyes need the soda ash to activate. And then there's other things that will help the colors be brighter or something, but they're not required in there. And the urea is just one of those things. Uh, salt is another thing that you can add. It is supposed to help the glauber salt. It's supposed to help the turquoise. And it also helps in the blacks. So sometimes I will add that to my dyes. The way that I've heard that the salt helps is it pushes the dyes out of the water and into the fabric with uh, low water immersion dyeing. So I've mixed it in with my regular dye sometime. I'm not sure if it does the same uh, amount of pushing, but I try it out. And it sounds like somebody else said they could help you with the, the low water immersion dyeing. Um, I don't, it's not something that I've done recently and I just off the top of my head can't sit here and just reel off how to do it. Eventually I do plan on making a video but it did sound like there was somebody in the chat room here that was going to help you figure out how to do the low water. Uh, you know how to do that? Okay, we got that. You want the ripple? Okay, Dragon Tears of Love said that they can help with the low water immersion dyeing. It's also low vision. Uh, Abraham, hello, I love your videos. Greetings from Mexico. Hello, good to see you. Uh, let's see, I'm just trying to get caught up here in the chat room. I uh, love the videos. I've recreated a couple of the shirts. Keep them coming. I will. Thank you, Liam. Your service is very much appreciated. Thank you, Annie. Hi, Quarrel. Is that a quantum scrunch you're wearing? Yes, it is. And I posted a link to my quantum scrunch video. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> yeah, you know how to do the quantum scrunch. Good to see you. Uh, Dragon thinks I'm always willing. Okay. I appreciate you guys helping each other out here. Greetings from Long Beach. Nice to see you, Erica. Asia made it back. Hello. Okay, looks like I'm caught up. Did you find the baking soda, soda ash worked as well as the other ones you had? Uh, yes, I, I was going to try to do a comparison and then I lost track of which tea was which because I soaked one in soda ash from Dharma and I soaked one in soda ash from the pool store. And then I made my own baking soda. So I soaked the tea in each one. But then I went back and I spun them out and I lost track of which one was which one. So, but at the end, all of the t-shirts looked great. I couldn't see that there was one that was lighter than another one. So I assumed that the bake, the soda ash that I made from the baking soda worked just as well. It just requires an extra step. So buying it from a pool supply store is, uh, the soda ash is great, but for some people who can't find the soda ash, that's why I wanted to pr provide an alternative, al alternative because soda ash is required for this. So, anyways, yes, I found that the baking soda soda ash works just as well as the other soda ash, and I used just one cup for one gallon. Okay. Yeah, I gotta speed up. We're already at over an hour here. And I think I think the high bid, I'm gonna close the the heart out here soon. So I'm gonna scroll back. And yeah, the last bid that I saw was at 65 from Maxine, my mom. She bid 65. Finally, 
bit of YouTube. I don't have anything uploaded yet, but I just ordered my first shirt, dies from Dharma. Awesome! You'll have fun with the Dharma dies. Oh, Emily, that's great. Yeah, if, if it's cheaper and you're willing to do the work, yep, that soda ash worked just as well for me. So, uh, but for me, the 30 bucks for 50 pounds is easy for me. So, thanks, Carl. It's bedtime here. Sadly, I'll catch you tomorrow. All right, Simon, thank you and bonjour. Or I guess that's hello. Sorry. <laughs> Whatever the goodbye is, thank you for stopping in. And yes, after I get done with this live video, then it'll process and then it'll be available to be watched. Uh, Emily, then I have money for pro... Yes, see, that's perfect deal. If you work a little with the soda ash, then you have money to buy the Procyon dyes. Good deal. Okay, so I can see that all of my dyes have spread a little bit. Some of them have spread up closer to the line. So this is the point where then I can go back and touch this up a little bit. And one way, if you don't have these bottles with the fine tips on them for doing this detail work, another way that you can do this, I'm trying to work with the bigger bottles because I've had some questions about this, is you can pick up your thing and that way when you tip your bottle, you only have to tip it up level instead of all the way upside down and then you can squirt out just a little bit of dye at a time here. And then that way I can bring that up closer to the line without it immediately spreading over the line. And then you just keep working your way down and do the same thing. Main thing though is you want to make sure you wipe off your hand before you move on to lighter colors here. So the, the dye can be done with these bigger bottles. You just have to work at it a little bit differently. And like I say, just picking that up allows you to tip the bottle just a little bit so that just a little bit of dye comes out. Okay, and then for speed of getting this finished up here I'm going to use the small bottles but you can see how the the bigger bottles you can still use those and get smaller amounts of dye so that it doesn't spread quite as much because that is a, a pain when you tie something off and then the dye immediately spreads right under your line so hopefully that will help you guys that are having issues with dye spreading too much And we're going to flip this thing over. And then I'll come back one more time and check just to make sure. Yeah, see, I already got yellow or red into my yellow here. <laughs> I grabbed that section with dye on my hand. So there's a little addition from the universe on our pride flag today. So I'm going to flip this over and we're just going to do the same colors on the back side. Okay. Let's see, yeah, there's lots of activity in this chat box. It slides by pretty fast. Can you talk a little about the difference between dyeing with Brit dye and the Procyon dyes? Googling has made me more confused. The Rit project was a mess. Um, I really can't speak to the Rit dyes because I have never used them. I've only seen the results and uh, the Rit dyes just don't provide the same brightness of color or darkness of the dyes that these do so my only re I've been using the Procyon dyes for 20 years and I've I've always loved the colors I get from them so that's the only thing I can recommend is trying the Procyon dyes if the the writ just isn't working for you like I say I don't know that I've seen too many successful tie-dye projects uh, well I don't want to say not successful People still have success with it. I haven't seen the, the brightness of the colors from the writ dyes that I do from these. And that's what I like. I like my colors to be really bright. So that's why I buy the Procyon dyes. But I know sometimes they are a little bit more expensive. So it's just a matter of maybe if you want to get into the Procyon dyes, 
one of the things you can do is buy just your three primary colors and one black and then you can do some of your own color mixing and that will help save a little bit of money and get you into the Procyon dyes a little sooner. So I apologize that I can't speak to the writ but I, I just don't have any experience with it. All I've seen is other people's projects showing me their muted colors and wanting to know how to get brighter colors and the only thing I've recommended is trying the Procyon dyes. Uh, it works very well, super cheap and colorful. Uh, Dharma are the ones suggested at the pool. A friend of mine and I think. Okay, yeah, it looks like the conversation going on around the dyes there. So, Mr. Tide, I wanted to ask what urea and soda ash is because I bought that too but I don't know what it is for just remember you saying something about it okay the urea is a wetting agent uh, and it also helps you mix more dye powder into your dyes but it's not required soda ash on the other hand is what activates these Procyon dyes so it is needed it comes in a white powder form and you just mix it one cup into one gallon of hot water and I do have a video on my beginners playlist on how I mix and even make the soda ash. So I recommend going and watching those. That will give you more information about those. But yes, the, the soda ash is required for these. The urea is optional for these. These kinds of dyes, the Procyon dyes is what I speak of. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. I'm going to take a quick scroll, but I, I don't know if any more bids have come in. Let me scroll back just a little bit, but we're going to close out the bidding on the heart tapestry. And I believe, yeah, it looks like it's still 65 from my mom. So if anybody else wants to place a bid, now's the time to do it because I'm going to close that out here in just a few minutes. As soon as I get finished with this tapestry here, I'm going to close the bidding on the heart tapestry and we'll start in with the peace sign. Greetings from Monterey, Mexico. Hey Charlie, nice to see you. I love all that you do. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. I'm glad to be of help. I love to see other people have success with this art. Uh, my tie dye brush is the only color is present. Terribly. Yeah, the the bleeding of the colors. Uh, that's like I say, one of the things you can do by putting that little bit of a space there and trying to apply smaller amounts of dyes by picking up your project and holding it up to the dye bottle so you only have to have the dye bottle tipped sideways and then you can just tip it forward just a little bit to get just a little bit of dye to come out at a time there. That's going to be the, the best procedure for having that and then the other thing you can do if, if they're still looking too sloppy is you can put a, a rag on top and I use clean dry rags put a rag underneath and then just give a little bit of a press and that will kind of help soak up some of the excess dyes out of your tea before you put it away to batch because when you put it away then all of the liquid equalizes in there and that's when I think a lot of the, the dye blends and mixes together so that will be just a, an easier way if you put less dye on and poke it in and then you also um, soak up some of the excess dyes. That will help you too. If you mix your own colors, do you mix the primary colors as powders or liquids? Does it matter? Um, you can do it both ways. I, I've done it both ways. Um, so I don't know if, there, if it comes out differently or not. But yeah, I mean, as far as like getting your, your orange in between your fuchsia and your lemon yellow, usually about half and half is a good starting point. I, 
it's hard to get a, a decent orange, but I've, I've seen people do it. So it's just a matter of adjusting your amounts and sometimes playing with the liquid first can give you a, a judging point because you can mix it and then put a drop on a white paper towel and kind of have an, a general idea of the shade. And then once you know that, the, the quantities, then you can go to mixing the, the powder. So if you know you used half and half of liquid dyes, then you can use half and half of your powder dyes and get the same results. So, and then I, a couple times back on this Wednesday show, I did a color mixing where I showed how I mixed liquid dyes. And I, I was mixing them in just little tiny bottles here just to give you an idea of how to mix. So I showed a couple different ways of mixing brown and my different blues and a blue green and a barn red and stuff. So you can explore quicker and easier by mixing the liquids and then take notes of how much of each color you used so that you can go back and reproduce that with the powder dyes if you want to. How do you use Dorea? What do you mix it into? I, I mix that into, uh, when I'm mixing my dyes up, I'll put you know my water in the cup. I'll usually put, if I'm mixing 32 ounces of dye, I'll put uh, two tablespoons of urea into the water, and then I put my dye into the water, and then I blend the whole thing up. So I mix it all at the same time. I know that's why I used our dyes. When you mix urea and water, so you can mix more dye in. Yes. Yeah, the, the urea uh, helps mix more powder in. So on colors like my red, uh, I think one of my blues, my black, I use more dye powder, so the urea helps that dissolve into there. But even still, sometimes with the black, you might end up with a, you know a bunch of gunk in your filter. Well, that is still the dye that needs to be dissolved and go in otherwise your blacks are going to be off shade so what I usually do is take my filter tap it back down into my bottle or my cup add more plain water to that and mix that up and then pour it into my bottle so yeah you want to make sure that you're not dumping away any of the gunk that didn't dissolve you can pour more water in fresh water that's why I usually only start with just, you know, eight ounces of water so that I have plenty of room to keep adding more to make sure all of the dye is dissolved. Uh, urea mixes into your water, mostly suggested for use in hot, dry climates. Yes, uh, that's the other thing. It's a wetting agent, so urea will keep your t-shirts wet for longer. And that's uh, a good thing because if the t-shirts dry out, then the dye bonding process will stop and then your colors aren't going to be as bright. Uh, usually just putting them in a tub with a lid or into a plastic bag will keep them wet. But in the hot, dry climates, sometimes that's not always true. So if you live someplace where it's hot and dry, then urea might be just become a regular thing that you add to your dyes just to help yourself out. Uh, so, and thank you, Kristen. And uh, let's see... Mammy and yeah, anybody that's been helping answer these questions, I appreciate that. I was wondering at the same time, my eyes went funny then, thought I said Obama. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Looks like you made it in time, Petey. I've dyed one, I did a uh, pride flag tapestry. So that's the first one. And we're closing out the bidding on the heart tapestry. So you made it just in time. We're gonna be starting the next one here soon. Uh, I believe the high bid still sits at 65. I'm gonna close that out in about one minute here. I'm just gonna finish reading these comments. Have you used the mill soft from Dharma? Is it worth getting? I'm wanting to put in an order with Dharma, but I want to make sure I don't miss anything since shipping is so much. Uh, I have not used the mill soft, so I, I can't speak to that. But if anybody else has used the mill soft from Dharma, uh, Aaron is looking for information on that. 
Remember to like the video. Yes, thank you. I appreciate all the likes on the video. It just helps my videos become more searchable. You're not actually going to make your mom buy that tapestry, are you? You need to make one. Uh, my mother has been one of my biggest supporters. A lot of people, they say that they don't charge their family and their friends. But a lot of times, family and friends are the first ones that are supporting you in your endeavors. And I've tried to tell my mom, though, that I'll give her stuff, but she insists upon paying like a regular customer. So, yes, she, she is bidding just like everybody else. But I do send extra stuff to my mom, too, because my mom and dad have been big supporters. I've been doing tie-dye for 20 years, and they've bought my stuff from the beginning. So yeah, any of the viewers can bid. My mom is bidding just like everybody else. And yes, if somebody outbids my mom, I would probably make my mom a, a tapestry and send it to her. But I know she likes to bid and buy my stuff too, so. Okay, I'm trying to scroll to the bottom here. I ordered all the primary colors. Off the Dharma, like fuchsia, lemon, uh, turquoise, extra blacks, watermelon. So yes, I can mix them more. Okay, great. You buy pastels. Uh, the pastels, you just mix your colors uh, lighter. So I don't have the exact numbers. I haven't made a video yet. I do plan on figuring that out. But I think just a, a rough guess was somewhere between one quarter and or one eighth and one quarter of a teaspoon if you're mixing like a 16 ounce bottle um, but I, I don't I don't know for sure but yes you you're gonna use way less dye if you want to get the pastel colors so I just use the same my same Dharma dyes and just mix them with way less powder Notice that sometimes you place a towel under the piece you're dyeing and sometimes you don't or do you use a rack? Is it just personal preference or is there a reason? Uh, the reason that I, I do it is to soak up some of the excess dyes and like I should have done it a little bit more on these ones here because I can see my, my dye is running under here. I got distracted <laughs> chatting again. But yes, I, I will soak up some of the excess dyes because sometimes I get a little bit too much liquid in there. And whenever you get too much liquid, then it, it will try to equalize throughout the fabric here. So putting the clean dry rags on underneath and above, then I can push down on these, soak up some of the excess, and then I'll have less of the, the color mixing when I set it aside to batch. So and I, I batch my stuff on a rack so that's, that's just a, a different process there. But this here is how I make sure that I don't have too much dye in there that's going to go in and mix. Like I say, you can see some of this coming into my yellow. Yellow is always the one that seems to get hit the hardest with these dyes, but that's a way to present, prevent it as long as you don't get distracted talking. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside now to batch for 48 hours. Okay, let's get this cleaned up and get going here. How do I bid here? Just uh, bid right in the, the chat box, just right where you placed your comment. Like you say, I'm getting ready to close the heart bidding, the heart tapestry out. It's sitting at 65 right now. So I'm going to close the heart out in just about one minute. I know I said that a couple minutes ago, but... I'm serious this time. <laughs> um, support a family, yes. I'm a hot mess. I <laughs> promise this time I won't get off on the show back up again. <laughs> uh, 
pastels even when purchased from Dharma uh, you will want to dilute them even more for a pastel look okay if I do a red spiral T two things how do I get the edge of the red to stop turning yellow um, the, the only thing that I've been able to do find for that is just switching to a dye color I don't know which one you're using but when I switched over to fire red from Dharma I haven't had that problem with uh, it leaving a yellow edge on me so and the other thing you can do if you're doing like red white and blue is to put some plain water in the white area and bring that kind of use it just like I use it like I would use dye so I'm using my water like white dye so I'll put my red on and I'll put my white on right here the water and then let them slowly bring up and touch each other here and then like I say I'll soak up some of that excess but that's that's the way that uh, I've stopped that red from spreading too much between switching to the fire red and then using the water in there also we love distracting <laughs> Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the bidding. It looks like we have the high bid sitting at 65 right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out in like going once. 65 going twice. 65 going three times. Okay, and sold to Maxine for 65. So we're going to put that one away. Congratulations, Maxine. And thank you, Mom. Let me clean up some of my mess here. Okay, so the next one that's going to be up for bid is the peace sign that we did last week. And once again, you can see the, the full thing over on my launch links. I'll post that in the bottom again here. So if you click on, I think, the second link there, it shows you my Facebook page where these are posted at. But these were the ones that I dyed up last week. So this here is the peace sign and it's about 54 by 56 inches so and we have a bid at 30 and then we have a bid at 60 for it so we're off to a good start on the peace sign and congrats to my mom for winning the heart tapestry 65 for the peace sign okay so now the next design um, well, I was doing a meditation and let's see how much time we've been here an hour and a half <laughs> We're, this is probably going to be another three hour video so I'm not going to apologize for it but I'm just warning you guys that this is going to be another long video because I know this one's going to take me a little bit to tie up um, anyways I was doing a meditation and I kept seeing the, the DNA symbol now we do a DNA fold in here, but that really isn't the DNA symbol. That's just a fold that kind of looks like a DNA, so somebody named it that. So I want to do the actual DNA symbol here with showing the strands of DNA. So anyways, what I've done here, I'm starting with the tapestry. It's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out, and it's barely damp. And I'm going to do just a quick demo of how I folded this up initially to this point here. So it's just too big to do that in person. So I folded this off on a different table here. And let me keep up with what's going on here. There is don't know where he gets talking to the mic. So. Uh, there's one in every family. <laughs> Just delivered my dye order with Chinese red, lemon, yellow, better black. There will now be more white cotton in my house. Awesome. Uh, we have a $70 bid for the peace sign. I'm going to get some 
ice cream and ready to watch and eat to learn. Okay, yes. Get some ice cream and cool off here and we're going to get started on this uh, DNA design here in just a minute. Uh, now if I use water as white, will that also help stay white while rinsing? Because I'm having problems with my white changing color. Uh, the the white the water using the water in there helps hold space while it's batching. Uh, as far as when you're rinsing, the the best thing that's going to help your whites stay white if you've been doing a lot is to batch them for longer. Because uh, part of the problem when you're doing rinsing, you're you're letting go of some of the excess dyes, and those dyes are still active because they've been in the soda ash that's in your shirt. But if you batch them for 48 hours and add some heat. Then by the time you get around to uh, washing, rinsing your tie-dye, most of the dye is already spent. So once I started going to 48 hours with heat, I stopped having quite as many issues with the, the dyes backstaining into my white. And another thing you can do is use the Sensorpol. Uh, some dyers, they like the uh, Blue Dawn dish soap, but both of those soaps are pH neutral. Uh, a lot of laundry detergents have soda ash in them. So if you rinse your all your soda ash out of your t-shirt and then you go throw it in your wash and you put regular laundry detergent in, you've added soda ash in and you've raised the pH of your water up a little bit. So then those excess dyes that come out and float in your water, they can go in then and activate and rebond to your t-shirt. And the white is where it shows up the most. So I, that's one of the reasons I batch for 48 hours. I know it's, it's difficult to wait that long a time, but you're going to get some better results from it. So that's, those are the two things I recommend most, is using the water in the white areas, rinsing in cold water to get that out before you open it, and then washing with Synthopol. Okay, so now this tapestry here, the way that I started folding it, I folded it in half to start with. And then I took the two edges and I folded, so I'm going to flip this around. I took these two edges and I folded them over. And I flipped that over top, flipped this other edge up. And that's where I'm at now with this tapestry here. I have these two edges, which are these two folds here. So basically what I'm going to do is do a double DNA strand. So I'm going to do one up this side and up this side here, but I'm folding them at the same time. So just fold in half and then just fold your two edges back. Fold it that way, flip it over, fold it that way. And then what I did to figure out my spacing here, I made myself a little template of how big of a DNA line that I wanted to make on there, measured this out. I did some math, and then I basically folded my design, my whole tapestry in half, and that got me this first line here in the middle. And then I measured this here, and I drew in two more lines, or I think, you know, if I drew, I centered this here, and I drew in two more lines this way. So one on each side. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my thing and I'm going to line it up on those three lines and draw this shape in and then on the last one it's going to hang over the edge here. So you'll see all that now but that's how I folded this initially. So that's the state that this is in right now with these two fat edges. That's what I'm folding on, not on these outer edges here. That's the back side. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope I covered that well. Okay, looks like we still have a $75 bid on the peace sign. Um, my twin sister Isis says hi. She loves your videos. Oh, thank you Isis. Isis. Hello. Um, hold the white spots above the color when rinsing if possible. Yes, yeah, if you can rinse and have your, your colors go above, you know, if your white is here, you would want to rinse and have your color come down. Sometimes it's not possible because your whites are mixed in there, 
but yes, trying to rinse that, especially in cold water, because the hot water is going to encourage more of the dye to come out. So I always rinse in cold water for about a minute to rinse away all of the soda ash. Uh, let's see. What do you use for tapestry fabric? I buy my tapestry blanks from um, sunshinejoy.com. If you go on to their website and write it, top it says tapestries there you click on that scroll down and there's one of the listings that says blank white tapestries and right now they have two sizes they've got this size and then there's the other one that's 58 by 90 and I've dyed one of those up too so those are two sizes I use the most okay so now I have a center line marked on my my guide post here so I'm going to draw my DNA symbol in here or my half a DNA symbol And then I'm going to draw, I'm leaving just a little bit of a space here. So basically I'm lining this center line up with the edge of the tapestry to give me just a little bit of space between these. And we're going to fold that right off the edge there. So now we're going to move this down. We're going to put another one of these on. And once again, that's leaving just a little bit of a space in between the lines there. And then one more here. So I'm just going to accordion fold this whole thing here. So I'm going to do a little bit taller of a pleat on this. Like I say, this was just one of the things that came to me in one of my meditations. And I like being able to have an image come to me. And then I can sit down with an art like this and recreate that pretty quickly. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to fold these three humps and then these two half humps here with the tie dye. And then like I say, there's four layers of fabric that we're going to dye here. And I'm going to take these gloves off. My hands are too sweaty. Okay, I start rinsing cold and get hotter. Yes, that's good. Uh... Oh, I think I'm... DNA is my favorite, yes. Okay. So we're just going to start working all the way across here. And I'm going to do just a little bit taller of a pleat. Um, probably about an inch there is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think I'm going to go just a little bit higher. Because I'm going to have a, a, a long run here. And I don't want to have... Uh, chance that when I tie this off that everything buckles up on me. So I usually will just do a taller pleat if I'm doing a longer run. So I'm just going to do all of these together. And then having that little bit of a space in there, I can work this line around and line it up so that it's going straight down there and just start my next run. Yes, it's hump day. Thank you, Saucy Bear. You're quick. Okay, and then some of these tapestries, like the, the peace sign and the heart, and I think even like the sun and the snowflake, I'm going to try to get in sometime soon, hopefully, and get some more of those made up that I can put over in my store. Right now I'm having my store kind of revamped, just trying to freshen up its look. And I'm also putting together a uh, frequently asked question page on there. And I'm going to start just compiling some of the questions that I get asked a lot and just try to put them over in the frequently asked question site. So as I get things going, I'll make them uh, aware to you guys, whether it's through announcements here on YouTube or through doing uh, posts on Facebook. Another thing I'm in the process of doing is putting together a Rainbow Warrior uh, logo or t-shirt logo. 
So in case anybody wants a Rainbow Warrior t-shirt from Mr. Tie-Dye, I will, once again, I will let you know when I have that all together. Let's see. I never win the race. He never knows. <laughs> Just got my first dye from Dharma. It did not come with instructions. How much dye do you mix with water? Um, I do have a video on that. Basically, if I'm mixing 16 ounces of dye, I use... Um, like a, a heaping tablespoon. Uh, a level tablespoon is three teaspoons. A little bit of a heaping tablespoon is four. And I probably heap it up where I have five or six. Anywhere between, I would say, probably four and six teaspoons is good for 16 ounces of dye. And I do have a video in my beginner's playlist. So if you just click on my channel and go over to playlists, Scroll down, you'll find the beginner playlist, and it shows how I mix the dyes, how I mix the soda ash, and then there's a couple uh, videos on there that I kind of walk through and just talk about the process of tie-dye. So you can check those out just to get some more tips and tricks going on in there. So, let's see. I'd like a T design. I'd like a T design has to rock though. Well, yeah. <laughs> FAQ page would be perfect for you. I've been watching your live videos for a few months now and noticed a lot of repeat questions, even this in the same video. Not a bad thing, but will help the video time. Yes. Yeah, like that, that's what I was thinking. I mean, I also answer a lot of questions. Um, I have people ask questions below the videos in the comment sections. I also have people ask questions on my Mr. Tie-Dye page, my do-it-yourself Mr. Tie-Dye page, uh, on my regular page, through my web store, and on my Instagram. So I answer questions in like, what did I say, six or seven different places. So, and I don't mind answering the questions, but it sometimes it does take up uh, two or three hours in the morning time to try to go through and answer questions every, and that's like every day but that's to be expected because I have 40,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel at this moment so definitely not complaining in any way I'm just trying to make it more efficient so if I can put together the frequently asked questions and then if somebody asks that question I can either direct them over there or I can just pull that page up and copy that answer and paste it. And that would just make my time go a little faster. So, But that's just a work in progress right now. It'll take me a little bit to get that completed. But I am working in that direction. Let's see. Bandanas would be fun. Yep. I use bandanas sometimes when I'm just kind of trying some designs out. But also bandanas make cool little uh, small tapestry and I've had people hang them up in their office if they work in a cubicle and they don't have a bunch of wall space a bandana is a nice perfect size uh, tapestry for wall space uh, yes the rainbow warrior tea awesome yes I'll be doing getting that I'm like I say getting that together right now Mr. Tie-Dye, did you braid your own beard? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, my lady braids this for me. And normally she's sitting in the back room and watching and kind of commenting in here. But you guys have probably noticed that she hasn't been commenting. Uh, Julie had another meeting and she sends her peace, love, light, and laughter out to all of you. She's sorry that she couldn't be here today, but she hopes that she'll be back again next Wednesday. But she just had a meeting and it had to be scheduled for today. So that's where she's at. But yes, she braids my beard for me and she braids it down the side here. So it's, I think she calls it a cornrow. So it holds it nice and flat to my face. And then it also makes my chin more so you can see the shape of my face. So my mom likes it when she can see my face. <laughs> so anyways, yes, and it just helps in the summertime. Uh, my beard will get quite warm if it's sitting on my chest all day long so this here gets it up off my chest and allows me to keep my beard through the summertime because otherwise I think I'd probably end up just cutting the whole thing off 
Okay. The fabric you made, the galaxy spiral, for me, seems heavier and wider than normal. Did you get that from a special outlet? Uh, yes, Louise, I got that from Dharma. It's in their wide fabrics, and I think it was it was the Muds 10, I believe, is the one. But it's a 10 feet wide. There's, they've only got a couple fabrics, and that was <clears throat> the heaviest of the of the fabrics that they had in the wide fabric. <clears throat> so, and that's when I think they've carried it for a number of years. I think I have bought that uh, probably as far back as 15 years ago. So, yes, I do like that one because for the big tapestries, you need a little heavier weight or I think the, the fabric would just tear under its own weight. And that was, that was a fantastic one to do. That was, we're talking about the space tapestry that I did that had the couple little spiral galaxies, but mostly in purple and blues. Uh, she bought that to put up on the ceiling in a bedroom. So, let's see. Dharma dyes are being bought out like crazy. I went there the other day, and all the blues are almost gone. Yeah, that's crazy. That's why some of the other dye houses, um, I think Custom Colors, I think he's really backlog right now, too. But there's Grateful Dyes in Colorado, and there's ProCam. I'm not sure where ProCam is. But that's another place. And you can also look on the Paula Birch website. And she has links for other places to find the dyes. They're probably some of the smaller dye houses. And they might still have some of the dyes in stock. But, yeah, hopefully we'll be getting through this shutdown. And some of the supply lines will open back up again. But... Yes, there's definitely some dye shortages going on out there. Bet you answer these questions in your sleep. It's appreciated though. I hope you know. <laughs> yes, I, I don't mind answering questions. Like I say, this is just stuff that I've picked up on over my 20 years. And I think working in the schools, doing the, the school tie-dye projects, is really kind of set me up nicely for doing these videos because I'm used to having this big group of kids standing in front of me while I'm doing tie-dye. So you guys are like all my kids out there watching me. So you just got to keep your hands back off the table, please. <laughs> uh, let's see. The most difficult fold you've ever done. Uh, let's see. That's, that's hard to judge. I mean, because some of the ones that I've done... Uh, I do stitch designs if they're really difficult, but as far as just doing a, a straight fold, uh, the, I think one of the trickiest folds that I've done is like the onk, because you have the, the rounded edge, and then you got the little circle inside there. I do have an onk video up. That one's a little bit tricky. Um, but I, I can't think off the top of my head of other difficult ones. I mean, the more that you practice, the easier they get. So I guess sometimes what would be easy for me might be difficult for somebody else, but it's just because I've had 20 years of practice. But yeah, there's there's some of the folds that are a little more difficult than others. Bossy, as long as we're having fun, that's all that matters. Yes. Oh, and Julie's been missed. I'll have to let her know. Like I say, she made sure to make sure that I was going to send her peace, love, light, and laughter out to all of you. Because she really wanted to be here, but she really needed to take this meeting, too. Thank you for answering my sock question on Instagram. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, like I say, I, I like to help people, and sometimes it just takes a, a quick minute to, to answer something. So, it's just when you have a hundred questions it takes a little longer <laughs> but that's okay I, I don't mind hi Julie we miss you and hope your meeting is going well she does a great job Julie is a real MVP thank you my handsome son oh thank you mom uh, notice that about Julie not being here today yep a little quiet right now Okay, I'd much rather be tie-dying than having a field day as... Tie-dying any day, yes. 
There's only 15 thumbs up. Come on, people. I show 60 thumbs up. I think sometimes uh, YouTube doesn't update the thing there. So you might update and see if that changes. Yeah, I see 61, 63. <laughs> what time do you start on Wednesday? I start this at 1.30 and then I just run as long as it takes uh, for everything that I'm doing. I usually try to get at least two tapestries tied up and answer as many questions as I can as well as do the auction and right now we have the auction for the peace sign going and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong but I believe right now Annie has the high bid with 65 I'm gonna scroll back just to verify that oh no Annie has the high bid at 75 right now on the peace sign Okay, after making a sale, what is your washing instructions to the new owner? Uh, I usually will tell people just to wash it in cold water with their darker clothes, their light colored clothes. Um, I, I do three hot washes to remove all of the excess dyes. And then after that, they're fine to be washed just in cold water with uh, dark colors, and they should be fine then. I need to get actually a little card printed up that I can include. Usually I just tell people in a message or if they ask a question or something. Okay, we're just about done folding across this DNA here. So now I'm going to get this tied and then we're going to poke some more of these things down here. And normally this is one with the number of layers. I got four layers of fabric here. I would probably normally do uh, let this dry out before I added the dye, but since this is a live video, we're just going to go for it. And I'm just going to tap the dye in there with my cuticle pusher. Okay. Yes, 75 was the, was the high bid so far from Annie. I love your show. It's my first time watching you live. I've learned so much from you. I will get one of your tapestries soon. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Vivian. Yeah, I'm going to be getting some... I have a whole bunch of tapestries, and I got them kind of scattered out. So that's another thing I'm trying to do is organize them. There is uh, one place, one of the links here that I have some tapestries for sale and then also in my store I have a few tapestries for sale but I'm going to try and get them more organized and get them in a place that's easier for everybody to find them and I learned that on Wednesdays it's best if I just do the auctions for the, the tapestries that I tied during this and then the other auctions I do are over on Facebook and those are my other tapestries that I die up not on a video so we just closed one of those up. I'll probably start a new auction on Facebook here soon too. So right now I'm just kind of getting some of these pleats tucked down inside, just kind of smoothing this out so it's nice and level. And I got my DNA tied up here. And we're going to put some dye on this in just a few minutes here. So I'm just kind of arranging all my pleats and tucking things down where they need to be tucked. Okay, I think that's good there. We're going to tie this up and then get going with adding some dye to this. I think we're going to be, we're at two hours now. I think last week we went over three hours. <laughs> Hopefully I, I will, I'll be done before three hours. 
Because I know some of you stay up extra late watching these. Okay. It can be learned to feel this one. Learned that patience, oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, sis. Don't forget the two sisters. Yep, we got a sister in the house, and we got mom in the house. I don't think the brother's in the house right now, but... We didn't have to share the poster for us. <laughs> okay, I think this is about ready here. start putting some dye on this. I think we still have a high bid on the peace sign sitting at 75. And I think that's, I think 75 is where I usually mark my peace signs at. So like I said, I will try to get some more peace signs dyed up soon along with the other tapestries that I mentioned. I think the sun and the snowflake and another one of these reverse diet hearts and just get them listed in one place there but okay so on this one here I am going to use a towel One of the things that towel does do also is it helps when I'm dyeing something so thick like this is it's going to help kind of try to pull some of the liquid down into the towel just because since this here is damp and this here is dry the liquid is going to try to equalize itself so as some of this liquid is absorbed into the towel it has this pulling action so if I'm dyeing something thick like this I usually like to put it onto a towel just to help try to get it soaked through. Let's see. Okay. Oh, you guys are talking family business there. Okay, it looks like you guys are just chatting and having fun there, so I'm going to go ahead and continue on. I'm going to start out by putting thick black dye to outline my DNA design. So let's just get turned around here a little bit. So usually, like I say, with the number of layers that I have here, I probably won't get a solid line but we're going to try to get as solid as we can so I'm going to put a nice layer on and then I'm going to poke this in with my cuticle pusher that's the one thing about the thick dyes is they just don't soak in as far but that's also why I get a nice thin line for my outlining because they don't spread as much either but if you work with the thick dyes you just need to work them down into the fabric a little bit so sometimes you can even open up the folds and poke the bottle down inside to just drip a little bit of extra dye down in there. 
So I'll probably come back a few different times and add more of this black dye just so that it soaks in all the way. Okay. I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to dye the actual inside of the DNA. I'm going to dye it in bright green. Like I said, I'm just kind of going by the image I saw in my head. You know, I kind of seen the image, but then I also seen kind of how I wanted to fold it. So I'm just kind of trying to match up what I saw. So we're going to just do this here in a bright green and then eventually I'm going to put some of the thick black dye onto my DNA also for the little strands in between the two strips. So these, this here is going to be the two spiraling strips that go back and forth and then the lines that I paint on here. Actually I'll probably use uh, the liquid dye because with all the layers I want it to soak in a little bit. So, but you guys will see that as I go here. And then I'm going to do the outside of this in the green also. And then I think the rest of it I'm going to do in kind of, since this here is a, a DNA molecule that I'm making, I'm going to dye the rest of it in DNA also. Just for fun. Although usually when I have thick layers like this, I don't try and do the DNA, but... We're going to go for it. So, let's see, we're going to go with this green. Uh, is it green? Blue, purple, red, orange, yellow. Green, yeah, okay. So, Whenever you're doing DNA type dyeing, it's always best if you line your colors up in the order that you're going to put them on so that when you go to dye the other side, all you have to do is just move one bottle down to the edge and then you can do that. And let's see, I'm going to put that right there. I think I want to. The green to be solid so we're not going to include that in the DNA no I think I will sorry I'm just trying to make this up in my mind here um, let's see what's going on nice towel I, um... <laughs> you leave my cuticle pusher alone there saucy I like my cuticle pusher We'll just go ahead and use it again right now. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start adding my colors on here. The nice thing about the rainbow colors is you can put them right next to each other because you're not worried so much about them running together. So I can just lay them down right next to each other. I don't have to try to leave a bunch of white space, although there was just a little bit there. We'll touch that up. Okay, first time to get to catch you live. Oh, well, nice to see you, April, and welcome. Yep. We've been doing these for a while, and I think I'm just going to keep on doing them. Everybody's been loving the Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-Dye. So. And I went back and I counted it up. This is my 11th episode of Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-Dye. So that was cool to learn. So I'm just going to keep numbering these and just keep on going. Liberty Carl, don't be... <laughs> <laughs> the dyer has liberties. I bought three pair of tweezers with cuticle pushers on them, so if I lose one, the tie dye fairy, <laughs> I can find the other. That's great, yes. Nice to make sure you have your supplies. 
because sometimes there's just that one tool that you need. So it's nice to have a backup and then have a backup to your backup. I think that's something that Adrian would do. Okay, we're getting down to the end here. I'm going to have to add another coat of dye before I flip this over. This being really thick, I just want to make sure that the dye soaks in. I'll probably peek inside also. So let's see here. What's going on? Looks like a lot of chat going on. Uh, naughty saucy. <laughs> Always blame the cats. Dragon tears, yep. Uh, how, do you, how did you get into tie-dye? Uh, tie-dye was something I got into, well, 20 years ago, and it originally started, I was, um, I don't know if I was actually married at the time, anyways, the person that I was with then, we had decided we were going to buy the local metaphysical bookstore that was going out of business in our town because we wanted to keep it open. Um, but we wanted to kind of change it up a little bit, so we went from a, a bookstore to being a book and gift store. And we sold books and candles and crystals and all kinds of other handmade gifts. And we wanted to just keep adding more to it. And uh, Karen had done tie-dye before. So she suggested that. I had never done tie-dye before. So we bought a small kit from Dharma and uh, broke out some of our own t-shirts and tried it out. I had a lot of fun with it, so we just bought a big kit from Dharma and bought a case of t-shirts and just kind of went for it. And we died for, I think, a week or two and filled up our rack and then we opened the store and once we opened, it was pretty clear that tie-dye was the favorite thing, so we went from being a bookstore with some handmade gifts to be in a tie-dye store that sold books within six months. We opened it out of our house and it was called Indigo Child. And then after six months, we opened a location downtown close to Main Street. And we took on a couple partners and we expanded and we turned into just this huge tie-dye store and that went really well uh, for about a year, but then we decided to move to La Grand. And it didn't go so well in La Grand. We kept the store open for, I think, about another year over there, but that was in 2001. And we opened our store uh, September 1st of 2001. So things didn't go quite as well over there as they did in Pendleton. So we ended up closing the store. But I had fallen in love with tie-dye, so I never gave it up. I continued to do tie-dye, and I moved out to Salem, Salem in 2004, and I started doing the Salem Saturday Market, and then about eight and a half years ago, I met Julie, and within a few months, I ended up moving down to Corvallis. So I stopped doing the Salem Saturday Market, and now I live down here in Corvallis with Julie, and I still do tie-dye. So I've kind of shifted around sometimes my process and what I do and when I do it or whatever. And of course the videos have been new just in the last two and a half years, but anyways, that's how I got into doing tie-dye. I need to see what's going on here. Yeah, we got an active chat room going on here. I think this is wonderful. I can't always keep up with all of it, but I, I just feel the energy of you guys exchanging back and forth. And Let's see, you're
you're so generous with your time on Wednesdays. Oh, I I love this time. I look forward to my Wednesdays being able to come and hang out with you guys. And I love to, to tie-dye tapestries. So that's what Wednesdays has really become about. I've tie-dyed, I think, a couple t-shirts on Wednesdays, but almost always it's tapestries on Wednesdays. So I appreciate you guys all joining me here because... I'm, I'm having a blast, and it would seem from the chat box that everybody else is having a blast. Uh, thank you. Yes. I, I I agree. Sometimes it's it's fun to look back on life and see the choices that we made. And because of me getting into tie dye, you know, I can be here now. But the other thing that really helped um, my stepson, he broke his wrist uh, on my birthday weekend, Memorial Day weekend, or Labor Day weekend, and. Because he broke his wrist, it was right before school started. He's right-handed. He can't write with his right hand. So I went into the school to help him for a couple weeks while he got used to his cast. And while I was there, I, every day I wore a tie-dye shirt. And after he didn't need help anymore, I continued to volunteer in the classroom because I could see just how overworked the teachers are. And they just really needed the help. So I started going in just a few times a week to kind of help out in the classroom. You know, grading papers or helping kids with their math or whatever needed doing. And by the end of the school year, the teacher asked me if I could teach her class how to tie-dye. Because they'd been seeing tie-dye on me every day that I come in. They saw tie-dye. So I agreed to teach the class how to do tie-dye. And that was where I first started doing the teaching, I think. I mean, we taught a few people here and there, but as far as teaching a group, that class uh, in, I was living in La Grande, but the school was in Island City. So that was the first time that I did a, a group class tie-dye. And then when I moved out to Salem, I started doing tie-dye there too. And I did the, the group class. I did a school, and that's where I got my name, Mr. Tie-Dye. I was working with a group of first and second graders. And they couldn't pronounce my last name, McClellan. So all day long, they called me Mr. Tie-Dye. So there was my business name now, given to me by first and second graders. So I started my, my business, used the business name, and then when I moved out to Salem, I continued doing the school events. And because I continued doing the school events, I did those for 16 years. Now I'm trying to kind of push some of the dye further down in here. And then also soak up some of the excess dyes. But mostly it's about pushing the dye down further in. And then I'm going to flip this over and start putting dye on the other side. So anyways, I spent 16 years tie-dyeing in the schools, and then that just set me up perfect. When I felt called to be of service, uh, I didn't really know just what I was going to do to be of service. You know, it's, it's always a, a personal choice for how people choose to be of service for, you know, the world and uh, the rest of humanity. And my choice came about to be sharing my knowledge of tie-dye because I could see what the interest was. I had like three people in a very short period of time ask me about doing videos. So after the third one, I decided that I, that's what I needed to do was make videos. And being a shy person, I thought I was just going to make a few videos and then be done. But I discovered how much fun it was and my shyness went away as far as if I'm just teaching tie-dye, something that I know and love, I could do this. But it was really through the, the practice that I had of teaching in the schools. So if I hadn't had that store, I wouldn't have 
learned how to do tie-dye and I wouldn't have been done tie-dye in the schools so I certainly wouldn't be doing tie-dye videos now so like I say that's one of the, the things I like to do is look back over my life and see where some of those little important choices were that you don't know at the time I mean at the time I had no idea that starting the store 20 years later I was going to be sitting here doing tie-dye out in front of the world so anyways I'm just rambling on now. Let's see what else is going on here in the chat box. Decide. Uh, okay. I do wonder, Carl, if we could do a day where we can keep up with our chatter uh, question time with Carl kind of live. Oh, you mean like doing a video where instead of me being busy, focused on tie-dye, I just come on and kind of uh, and do question and answer? If that's your question, then yeah, I think I can I could set something like that up. And I maybe I'll pick uh, like a different day of the week and a different time and do maybe just a and a where maybe I do kind of a little bit of tie-dye, but mostly I'm focusing on the, the questions and answers. So if that's what you were asking, then yeah, I think we can set something like that up. Uh, besides blues you use for snowflake, what other hues do you recommend? Have you done it in other colors? Uh, the snowflake uh, came from me doing the sun. So I'd start out doing the, the sun tapestries where I was working with the fire colors, and then I decided that it really looked like it could be a snowflake so I, I used went into the blue tones but I haven't explored with any other tones yet but I do plan on kind of exploring with that I just need to sit down and tie up a whole bunch of those tapestries and then just put different colors on each one of them but so far the sun and the the snowflake have been the two that I'm doing but I've wanted to do it in the greens and I wanted to do it in purples so, yes, you can look forward to seeing more tapestries in various colors from me. Uh, wait a minute. Yep, stepping stones of life's path. <laughs> Saucy is someone who likes to cause trouble in a playful manner. Saucy Mare here in the UK is just kind of what you call someone like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> There's a lot of women in my community that watch your videos. Her husband introduced me to your channel. I always love tie-dye. Awesome. Thank you, April. Yeah, it's always fun to hear from people and hear that, you know, I've been helping them in one way or another. Okay, we need to get back to tie-dyeing here. I think I'm fairly well caught up. Okay, yes, a live chat with Carl. Yes, Q&A time. Okay. Sure happy I found your videos. I'm trying everything. Awesome, Pam. Yes, it's fun. I, I, I try to teach, you know, all of the basics, and then I, I'm going on to show you what you can do with all of those basics. There's lots of different ways, and I love to see... I get many people that will write and show me their latest projects and show me how they they took one design and made some changes to it to, to fit some of their own ideas. And I just think that's so fantastic. I mean, I, I love to help people, but I really love to inspire people to create because there's so much that can be done with tie-dye. I could do tie-dye for every day uh, for the next 20 years and still not do everything. So. The rainbow warriors out there across the world, I need your help in coloring the world in tie-dye. So that's why I'm, I'm doing these videos. That's another reason why I do I share my knowledge to be of service, but to, to help in my mission. My mission is to color the world. And I can't do it alone. But I can do it with a little help from my friends. Isn't that how the, the song goes? Just a little help from my friends. All my rainbow warriors out there. I guess they're not my rainbow warriors, but the rainbow warriors. 
And the Rainbow Warriors, you could be people that just love color. It doesn't have to be tie-dye even. So people can be Rainbow Warriors in all kinds of ways. Oh. <laughs> okay, I got distracted again. Yep, so we're not doing a DNA on this one. Um, probably what I'll do, maybe I'll go back and I'll add just a little bit of darker colors. But I forgot and... I, I started dyeing this and I, I didn't move my bottles down and I'm already halfway through my rainbow so we're just going to go for this. This is just going to be uh, rainbow lines that go out on either side of the DNA here and maybe I will paint, put a little bit of darker colors on so like I can put a darker blue, I can put red over top of that, put my darker orange and my darker green on just to give a little bit more spice. But that's how it goes. Sometimes things, you just don't get what you, you planned on, but maybe I wasn't supposed to have it that way. Sometimes the universe helps me out in that way. And you just got to roll with it. No sense in crying over spilt milk, is what they say, I believe. Okay, what else do we got going on here? You mentioned meditation. Do you practice any martial arts? Uh, I don't at this time, but I have been thinking about uh, taking up one of the martial arts just for uh, the, the meditative purpose of it. Because I know some of the martial arts, they are, they're a moving meditation. So I have had some interest in exploring that. But I'm just kind of waiting for some things to kind of settle out because I got a lot of different things going on between revamping my website. I'm still trying to get all of my t-shirts listed in my stores and I got tapestries that need to be entered in and then there's so many tapestries that I want to make. <laughs> so, so the time just seems to be keep speeding up. So yes, eventually I will get into a, a martial arts, but it'll be one of the, the moving ones where you do the different positions and you move and you whoosh, whoosh. Anyways, a little Karate Kid action there. Uh, I like the purple snowflake idea too. I may have to try that. Awesome. You did a lot more a few years back. Okay. Can we do a project from home with you? Can we do a project from home with you while you do it live? Um, yeah, I've had several people that have mentioned that they are following along as I'm doing a, a, a video and tying up the same thing. Sometimes they're tying up something different, but they have tied up some of the same things. Is, is that what you're meaning? Or are you meaning like doing a, like a, a video chat where it's like a one-on-one -on -one thing? I haven't got into those yet. It's something that I would probably need to charge for that if I was just doing a one-on-one. -on -one. But I haven't figured out a cost for that uh, and how I would do that, whether it be like on Facebook or, or not Facebook, um, FaceTime or there's another one of those face. I, I haven't done the face chat things before, so <laughs> I'd have to still figure that out. But if that's what you're talking about, that's something that we can think on um, and try and figure something out eventually. But once again, right at this point, I'm really busy and just trying to. I've been trying to work in another day where I do some live stuff and like I said I think maybe the Q&A is going to be one of those things where maybe I do a different day at a different time. But yes this is going to progress as we go so if that works in we can figure something out for doing live projects together. That song is going to be used at work all week now. Awesome! Just a little help from my friends. Rainbow Warrior Grateful here. Awesome! Nice to see you, Luna. Well, glad you're here. We have a great, you have a great attitude. Oh, thank you. Are you talking to me or maybe somebody else? <laughs> oh, I'm way behind in the chat here. I was thinking of Lion King, Elton John, and you said tie-dye for 20 years and still not be done. More than you can do is the circle. Oh, okay, yep. And if you follow the universe, wanted more rainbows. Harkening back to the question, tie-dye turning out differently than you imagined. 
Uh, yep, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, Rainbow Warriors Unite, catchphrase with Carl. There's a thought. Uh, first time watching live, this is great. Carl, have you ever dyed your beard? either by mistake or on purpose. Uh, no, I haven't. I usually try to keep it up. Uh, sometimes I might maybe a little bit on the tips. Whenever, if my beard isn't braided, it hangs down further on the table here. Uh, right now it's it's not getting down into the dye, but no, I and I haven't dyed it on purpose. I really do like the, the gray strip that comes down the middle. And I'm afraid that if I dyed it, that that might not wash back out again. And I like the color of my beard the way it is. Uh, out in the sunshine, I can see lots of different shades. I, you know, lean into some almost purpley or you know, maroon type shades in there, and I got some blonde and some gold. So, anyways, I like the colors in my beard, so I probably won't dye it. The universe has intervened. Yes, it's not our fault. I apologize for my. <laughs> no, it's not your guys' fault. It was just me not paying attention, and it's it's just a method of showing you guys that sometimes unexpected things happen, and you just have to roll with it. Because I could be upset about it, but then what what purpose would that serve but to distress me? So I would rather just be happy and think that the universe has added its little part into my design and made me do it just a little bit differently. So and what I'm going to do is just add some darker colors. So on top of my turquoise here, I'm going to add some of my sapphire blue. So that will give me a little texture. And then on top of my green, I'm going to add just a little bit. I'm going to not go all the way with the green up here. I want to leave just a little bit of light green up there. But back here, I'm going to add green over top. So there's other ways that you can accomplish. I didn't get it the way that I had planned, but I can still do it. And here's a, a darker yellow. And then I think I'm going to put a little bit of black over top of the purple here. Not too much, but just a little bit, just to darken it up some. I gotta fill my up. And it looks like we're at two and a half hours now. I think we will get out of here at three hours. Or less than three hours. We still got the bidding going on. I think the last bid I saw was 75 from Annie. So if somebody has placed a bid higher than 75, can you please refresh your bid? so that I can find that easily. But we're gonna close out the bidding here in just a little bit, as soon as I finish dyeing and checking this a little bit. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit of black just over top of the purple. And just for fun, I'm gonna add a little bit of fuchsia over top of my orange. And I'm gonna add some red over top of my fuchsia. I think this here was one of my darker reds, so there we go. So that'll be a little bit of texture. It's not going to be the DNA type effect, but it'll at least be just a little bit of added texture in there. Now what I'm going to do is peek down inside and see if I have some white down in there or not. Uh, let me see here. Who's more tech, you or Julie? Uh, I think I am more tech. But she's come along. She's got some different projects she's working on where she needs to be a little bit more computer savvy. So she's been working and doing stuff. But I think I do a little bit more tech right now. Tai Chi, yeah, that's probably, I think that's one of the ones, martial arts, that I had looked into. So that might be the one that I take up a little bit. Just, you know, nothing... Professional, I'd probably just look up YouTube videos and just do it here at home just for my own reasoning for meditation. Uh, I also use tie-dye to get my mind off of cancer. Not able to work anymore. I get to earn a few bucks while getting my mind. Awesome. Yes. 
Tie dye is a, is a, a great way to kind of escape. I can find it almost meditative when I'm just sitting here by myself. I can sometimes, you know, I'll put on some music or something, but other times I like to sit in silence and sometimes it just becomes a meditation just in of itself as I sit here and work and I'll have ideas, whether they're tie-dye or other ideas, come to me while I'm doing my tie-dye work. Okay, so I'm seeing just a little bit of white down in there. I don't know if you guys can see that on the channel. Let me I gotta wait for you guys to catch up because yeah right there you see that white spot so I need to add more fuchsia and more purple in there I think my blue is good my green is good and also make sure to clean your cuticle pusher yellow is good and orange is good okay so I think just the the fuchsia and the purple both needed more color so I'm going to add another layer and then we're going to check in with the chat I'm probably going to close out the bidding on the peace sign here soon so if you guys wanted to get any more bids in I'm going to scroll back and see where they're at let me go ahead and add just a little bit more of each color Okay, oh, and then I'm still going to add some black to the edge there. So I still got a little bit more time. I'm going to flip this over in a second here. Uh, Zoom, maybe, or Skype. Yeah, those are, I've, I've participated in Zoom meetings before. Um, but the, the camera on my... I could probably still do it on my phone, but I wouldn't have as big of a screen. My my webcam on my computer doesn't work right now, so I wouldn't be able to do that, but I might still be able to do it on my phone. I just wouldn't be able to see everybody's project as easily. And Skype, I haven't used that before. I haven't used Instagram Live, so I guess I need to look into some of these other live uh, platforms here and see what's going to work. And slowly see if I can figure that out. Like Duo is really good. It doesn't drop out half as much as, say, WhatsApp. Yeah, and I, I've heard of WhatsApp, but I don't have that either. So I will look into some of these. If you tell us ahead of time what we need, we can follow along and do it from home. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's something that I can do. Um... I will try it one of these times when I set up a video on a different day than the Wednesday. Um, well, I guess that even if I get my Wednesday stuff figured out ahead of time, I can put out a little bit more information about what I'm doing and what you'll need so that you can follow along even on the Wednesday ones. Sometimes I don't get things posted, though, until like Monday just because I haven't had the idea come to me yet. Sometimes they, they come in my meditations and maybe I just need to make a practice of meditating more on Thursday and Friday so that I have my my tapestry ideas for the next week. We'll get this figured out. This is my 11th episode so I, I am still figuring things out but I think I'm getting better at doing these live shows here. Good to see it's not only me from Western Colorado. Hello, RL. Nice to see you. Yeah, we're just finishing up here uh, with a couple different tapestries. and But once I'm all done, you'll be able to watch this whole thing. We're leaning into two and a half hours now. Uh, I need to go get mom her medicine. Okay, Annie, we'll see you later. Peace. Uh, yeah, I think right now you still have the high bid at 75 and I don't see other bids. How about if I just close this out right now? So we have 75 as the high bid, so that's going once, 75 going twice, 75 going three times. 
Okay, we have a winner. So, Annie, if you're still here, you won the tapestry at 75. So, the payment plus uh, the $7 shipping would bring it up to 82. So, you can send that through. Well, you, I think you bought ones before, but I'll post my launch links again. So, you can either send me a message if you want an invoice, or you can just pay through the donation link there but I believe you already know that so we'll just go with it okay I just didn't show pen shirts for some Great day of tie dye. I know you spoke earlier of this, but I just got my Dharma dye three ounce bottles. How would you mix those water to dye? Uh, so, if I do 16 ounces of dye, I use anywhere from four to six teaspoons. So, for eight ounces, you're going to use two to three teaspoons of dye. And you can just mix that just straight with water, put it in your bottle and shake it up. Or if you have a blender, you can blend that up. If you want to use urea with that, I would probably, for just eight ounces, let's see, two, one, probably one to one and a half teaspoons of urea if you're going to use urea to mix your dyes. But urea is optional, it's not required. Okay. Little white. Bye, Mr. Tie Dye. See you, Eric. See you. Have a good day. Facebook just in my group setting on option two. Oh, yeah, I've seen that, but I haven't gone in and looked at it. Okay, I'll check out uh, the Facebook chat rooms too and see. What's that? But it's bigger here in UK than US. You should post a video on how to tie dye names on shirts. That would be awesome. Uh, the way that I do letters, I either paint them on with thick dye or there is a way to fold the letters. I've only shown did a, a video for just four letters but I tie-dyed the word love on a tank top so if you look on my channel for how to tie-dye letters uh, you'll find that come up and that shows you how I just kind of bring the letters up and fold and kind of tie it all up together and then dye it uh, but a lot of times with names if depending on how long they are I will use just thick dye but eventually I hope to get another video up where I show a little few more of the letters some of the trickier ones. Okay, would you ever do tie-dye camp? Um, I, I have done tie-dye camp through like school events where they had me come in, they were doing a, an outdoor school and they had me come in and do tie-dye with the kids. Um, as far as doing just a, a tie-dye camp uh, for like other people, they come. We've talked about doing a, a gathering of some sort, but right now with the shutdown, it, that hasn't come through at all. But that's a, a possibility of me going to a doing a, a camp out of some sort eventually. But that's not something I can try to figure out right at this point. But yes, I am open to that. I've been doing this with bandanas. I have to scramble a few times. Most have turned out awesome. Washer is on the final rinse now. Fingers crossed. They aren't ruined. <laughs> yes, let's cross our fingers for you. Hopefully, they came out just perfect for you. Awesome. My name has four letters. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, Asia would probably be fa fairly easy of a name. You should be able to watch that video and get a pretty good idea on how to fold up your name. Uh, did your grad like their tie-dye? Uh, no, they they weren't able to stop by. They were trying to come this morning, but they didn't make it here. And I sent her a note and said that, you know, if she didn't make it by now, then I was going to have to do it another day because I needed to prep for this video here. So I think we're going to try for tomorrow or the next day, but I need to contact her and see what day is going to work. 
Okay, this side is looking good. I still see just a little bit of white down in there. So I'm going to add just a little bit more fuchsia and purple to this side. And my blue and green is looking good. The orange, green, and... Okay, yeah, so it's just the, the purple and the fuchsia. And those two colors, for some reason, seem to be the ones that don't like to soak in quite as far as fast as the rest of the colors. So I'm just going to add more. That's a good way to make sure you're not going to have too much white spots is just to open up the creases and look down in there. And if you see white, then if it's just a tiny sliver, it will probably go away. But if it's bigger spots, then you probably want to add more dye to it. Uh, when you do tie dye, uh, when I do tie dye, I just tie dye. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, I've seen lots of people that they'll do tie-dye and then they add their own design to it with the cry-cut machine or screen printing. And I think that's something I'm going to be doing for my um, Rainbow Warriors tee. Is I'm going to have some screen printed that I'm going to dye and then I'm also going to make some available that you can purchase that have the, the logo on there in case you want to dye your own Rainbow Warriors tee. But yes, that's a nice way to, to add detail to a design. Okay, I think we're getting close here. Now the next thing is I want to add some black dye to my DNA design here because you've seen the strands where they kind of wrap around but then they have the, the lines in between them. So that's what I'm going to add in here now. So I'm just going to paint, I'm going to use uh, regular black dye, and I'm going to use one of these foam brushes, and I'm just going to paint some dye on here. I'm not going to go all the way out to the edge. I can kind of see, you know, how we did the, the loop up and down. I can see that the loop ends right here on some of these, so I'm just going to paint right out to here, and hopefully that's going to give me the effect that I want there. Like I say, this is all just kind of in my brain. I haven't done one of these yet, so I'm just learning as I go and just trying stuff. And the reason I'm using the regular dye is I want to make sure that it soaks in further because we do have four layers of fabric in here. So the thick dye wouldn't soak in far enough. So I'm just bringing that down part way here. And then we'll be closing this out soon. So we already closed out our auction for the peace sign. So as soon as I get this done, then I'm going to close this video. So if there's any more questions, you guys can ask them and I will answer before I close this. Uh, let's see. Thanks, Mr. Tie-Dye. I'm about to start dies and will last a couple weeks your inspirational always get me excited to start new designs that i've learned from you awesome mo fish i wish you success on all of your designs that you do i love to help and inspire people and if you guys are on facebook you guys can tag me in some of your designs so that i can see them okay so now i'm going to Flip this over, I'll flip it this way. And we're gonna paint this on the back side. Oh, and I, I I still need to add my darker colors to the other side. Just dawned on me, I had darker colors to this side, but I haven't added them to the bottoms to the other side yet. Okay. Um, lesbian? I, I don't know what lesbian is. Is that a... Okay. I think you're just...
Okay. Alrighty, so like I say, once I get this black on here, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put these dark colors on the other side just so that it's even. Whenever you're doing lots of layers like this here, it's harder to put one color on one side and a different color on the other side and have them show up evenly unless you're doing a DNA type thing but since I added these dark colors to the other side I'm going to add them I mean to this side I'm going to add them to the other side also Okay, so I'm going to flip this back over now. And last time I put some sapphire on my turquoise. So I'm going to put that same color on here. I'm going to put dark green over my light green. I put red over my fuchsia. purple over top of the black. Like I say, I'm just doing just one quick light coat on these. I don't want to oversaturate it. I just want to add just a little bit of color, extra color, just to give a little bit of texture or patterning. Oh, and I think I put fuchsia over top of my orange. So, there we go. I think that is what we have. So I'm going to set this aside to batch. And as per normal, I will do a reveal video for these. Um, let's see. I'm trying to decide if I want to bring that black all the way out to these edges here. Yeah, I think I do. Okay, so I just made a, a decision. I'm going to bring this black all the way out to the edges. It just started dawning on me that my lines not be might not be completely solid if I don't bring them all the way out. So, but I put less dye out here because this area is thinner than the other part. So, looks like we still have 61 people watching. So, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this Wednesday afternoon or for some people Thursday morning. And other people, it's Wednesday night, heading into thir early, early Thursday morning, I think, for Saucy Mare. So, I wish you guys success on all of your tie-dye projects. And like I say, I will have reveal videos for these up, hopefully Friday, probably late afternoon sometime. Oh, I don't have room for that in my box right now. So we're going to set that right there. I'm going to take my gloves off and see what else we got going on in the chat room here. I think we're wrapping this up though. I don't see any more questions. Yeah, that, that happens sometimes. The, the, the odd comments and because he spelled things differently then it went past the, the blockers. So Anyways, if that happens again, I'll, I'll delete him from the page here. We don't need people being rude in the chat box. Uh, let's see. I hope you, this turns out like you saw. Yes, me too. That was, like I said, that's what I thought about, why I needed to finish that out there with the black. So we'll see how that all goes. But like I say, I, I love to experiment. I get an idea, and then I have it in my mind. I figure it out. But until I open it, I don't even know how it's going to turn out sometimes. Okay, can't wait to see on the fly decisions. Yep. So hopefully it looks like the. Yep, thank you. Uh, I can't wait to see this reveal. If you have to work moment, your people see all next. Okay, it looks like we're all caught up. So, yes, thank you all for joining me for this 11th edition of. Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-Dye. This has become my favorite day of the week. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here and showing interest and for bidding. Like I say, congratulations to the winners of the tapestries here. I'll get those signed and get those sent out to the people. 
Um, and once again, when this is all done, this video will go up live. It'll take a little bit to process, but you'll be able to watch this. And I just wish you guys well in your week. I love you all. Peace, love, light, and laughter to everybody. And I will see you again on next Wednesday. Peace. Thank you.